everyone thank you very much for coming in let me just take a quick minute here uh twitch has been giving me a little attitude lately so i want to make sure that i'm properly tagged as um stellaris we're still in the loading screen so there's not too much of a worry there but i do fear that it might take me a minute to actually bring up my page okay no longer hosting ponce as was written in the prophecy uh, and it's not telling me... All right, so we're no longer in the loading screen, but it is not actually telling me what game I'm playing on Twitch. Well done, Twitch. Um, I am very glad that that Amazon money is going where... <laughs> where it's intended. All right, here we go. Lovely. I am tagged appropriately. All is well. Hopefully you all can see me and hear me, and um, yeah. I also just got a message by from Johnny Big Time. <clears throat> all right, sorry about that. Um, so. What are we going to do? Um, first of all, uh, for the benefit of those of you who like watching this stuff on YouTube, uh, I suspect this edited video will be there uh, a while. For those of you who were here last week, there was that rather regrettable event um, following a host. And I have generally made it so that the videos of... Um, like the videos of the broadcast are the full thing and that is a little bit of a it's a bit of a protection for me not making intemperate remarks um but for those of you who don't know uh there was a host which was greatly appreciated and unfortunately that host brought someone who was very unkind in chat and um in my own sense i suppose i didn't have to yell at them uh, but essentially it ended in a really bad way, uh, and there was about 15 minutes of relitigating the Epic Store stuff, which I realize almost always drags the, uh, the stream down. And I ultimately decided that um, I was going to snip that out of YouTube. It is a very long process to do that directly on YouTube, it turns out. So uh, I am waiting on a verification from them that the offending remark is removed. Um, in fairness, I mean, there's no way to verify it. I sort of accept that I should probably just be, um, even though there is a certain affected um, outrage that I have in moments like that, um, you know, I probably would be better served to just keep this kind of tone throughout anyway. Um, but one way or the other, um, the biggest thing about it is, uh, one, the person hosting felt really bad about it, uh, which they shouldn't have because they're not responsible for the individuals who come through. Uh, individuals are responsible for their own behavior. Um, but as it turns out, this individual also is, uh, somebody who's made a mod, um, which has, I've never heard of it, but apparently has some traction. Uh, and so... As much as I hate to do something like that, I opted I opted on the side of just snipping out the last 15 minutes of the last uh, broadcast to avoid fanning the flames of any other nonsense that would come as a result of it. Um, I don't really think anybody needs to know the detail. And as far as names are concerned, that is off the table. Um, but if anybody has any questions in terms of what I said or why I said things the way that I did or just... In general, I'll, I'll answer the stuff that I'm responsible for. Um, but the best I can say, I, I still sort of intend to keep the streams as a, you know, this is the full broadcast, warts and all. Um, in that particular case, I decided to snip it <clears throat> because it would, um, it would basically create more happiness or at least mitigate uh, unhappiness um, to a greater extent than, uh, than putting the full thing up. Um, because the last thing I want to find out is somebody, uh, one of the decisions that came out of it actually was <clears throat> after talking with the, uh, the person who hosted, I did a quick look at, um, that individual sort of behavior 
offline, and it really does seem to be that they dig in hard and um, don't let go. And so I was just, you know, the last thing I want to find is another YouTube video where I just wind up with a succession of nasty comments um, for years on. So, hey, Half Truth, good to see you. Uh, one one good example of this is I really enjoyed the Lawrence of Arabia um, segment of Battlefield 1, um, but I do this all improvised, right? I don't come with prepared notes, so I sort of stumbled on my recollection of some basics on uh, Lawrence's biography. And this is a video that, even though Battlefield 1 is not the latest Battlefield, and it is such an old video, I, I still actually get people leaving comments on it, which are just straight up designed to make me feel bad. <laughs> Um, so I am trying to minimize the number of videos that are like that, and so that is my justification for, uh, for, for censoring. I realize it's such a dangerous word now. Um, one of the videos earlier. And if you don't like it, too bad. Um, lovely to see you, Half Truth. I believe you're the first one in, at least the first one chatting. I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are, because that was my... Not playing WoW. Oh, wow. WoW of Warcraft. Um, so I'm actually one of the people who did not play uh, World of Warcraft vanilla. Um, I got started <laughs> I got started um, because a co-worker I was quite attracted to was playing it. And I thought that that would be a really good way to sort of, um, you know, get in good with her. <laughs> Um, ironic, actually, and it, it, it worked, by the way. Um, I believe our first date was actually her showing me all the vanilla content that she used to really enjoy. And, um, uh, I, I had a decent enough time with it, I, I will admit. So I sort of started playing midway through Wrath of the Lich King with her. And, um, I did buy Cataclysm and... Ultimately, so she was not playing anymore. She left, and because I did have sort of like a guild, but with her gone, I sort of lost the reason to play the game. And as a result, I, you know, I bought I bought uh, Cataclysm, and it wasn't even a matter. I know a lot of people left it because they they thought it was a lesser offering. In my own case, I, I can't even say it was that. It was just I'd quite literally lost the reason for playing the game uh, for myself. And so um, I sort of stopped around then. I have kind of occasionally jumped in now now and again otherwise, but I, I really do actually need to sort of sit down and have a have a proper um, you know proper uh, proper play of it. Um, don't dislike the game. It's just um, I uh, it never like, when I was in it, I was very proud of my sort of role as a tank, and I thought I did a good job of it, and, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> but I... Um, I don't know, like, w either I'm, I'm jumping in with both feet, or I'm sort of indifferent, for lack of a better term. Uh, and so because I just have so many other things demanding my time, such as, you know, Stellaris and I want to do some more Age of Wonders Planetfall, um, it seems that actually, so out of curiosity for all of you guys, um, uh, how do you guys feel about more Age of Wonders Planetfall? Because I'm trying to, I always try to express these things in terms of like trade-offs. So it's like if I were to stop playing Darkest Dungeon and play more Planetfall, would you want that? If I were to stop playing Stellaris for a bit, and uh, play, um, you know, play uh, um, Planetfall, would you want that? Um, Cultist Simulator is kind of locked in because I'm getting so close to my, my live ca uh, finishing my live cast of that. Um, this is always helpful feedback because I really want to play more Planetfall, but I, I not at the expense of like running out of stuff that um, might be more appropriate. Uh, I was going to talk about the Stellaris position, but then, then wow. Well, so how many of you guys are playing uh, World of Warcraft out of curiosity? I'm not opposed to trying it out, but I would probably play like the War for Azeroth rather than Classic again. Stellaris or Darkest Dungeon can be... Oh, wow. So it sounds like you really want... Uh, it sounds like you really want some more Planetfall, Tall Man Alive. Um, that's good. That's good information. Um, so 
the as the title indicates, one of the things we're going to be trying to do is establish ourselves in the terminal egress. There's a couple of things that I need to do sort of in the interim to make sure that happens. Actually, before I do any of that, I'm going to make sure I find my pen. I had it in my... oh, crap. Found it. All right, there we go. Um, <clears throat> let me bring up my papers as well. So, um, one of the big things that we're going to try and do here, the trade-off that we're going to talk, because you guys already know this about me so far, that I, I pretty much think about every game in terms of trade-offs. And... Um, if I were to be spending the influence and the alloys on expanding into the rest of these sectors, or if I could just get the one in the terminal egress, which one would I want to go for? And the clear answer in this one is the terminal egress for two reasons. Number one, it secures me from anybody using that to access um, my own territory through the Howling Vortex. Number two, it gives me a doorway to everybody else, so I can take the Vagi Maelstrom and I can start running amok inside this territory. Um, alternatively, I could take... I thought there was another one around here somewhere. Uh, I'm just trying to find my most likely enemies. Ooh! The Commune of Vislok seems to have been dismembered by the... by the gray, uh, the gray goo, the, na the nanites. This may turn to my advantage after all. No, oh, they still have an overwhelming fleet power. That is surprising. Um, Why can't I find any of these other gates? I'm assuming I should find them in like the big... Oh, here we go. The Zikoran Black Hole. So this is what... Yeah, Blorg's Bane. All of these are... There's a reason why there's big gaps around them. But anyways, so this is, this is effectively so that I can lock down my position in here. Now, there's going to be two things that I need to do in order to accomplish that goal. Um, number one... I am going to need to um, build up my navy and basically get them back into into fighting shape so I can effectively afford just a little short of three major fleets. And uh, I do still need to build them, but those are still on the way. I think I had like an IOU from last, uh, last game, if memory serves. Um, four destroyers and six corvettes, it looks like. Yeah, and these are my Daggerfall notes. By the way, more story progress in Daggerfall. So it's um, it's a sparse episode in that I really only do one thing. Um, but I am. it feels like Daggerfall is actually getting close to something of a climax. So hopefully for those of you who enjoy that, uh, that'll be coming uh, tomorrow evening. Oh, there's a Gaia world. Okay, I got to... I got to... Um, I gotta dedicate some fleets towards this. But yeah, actually, maybe it's better. So number one, um, you know, do I want to take these territories? Well, there's nothing really stopping me from grabbing them. So as long as I have just kind of a consistent chugging of my uh, my construction ships, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, next question would be, well, do I want to go to war with someone? Well, maybe. I mean, um, maybe the Andagoge Nation has some stuff that I want to take. Uh, who are they protected by, by the way? Nobody. So if I was so inclined, um, I could try and at least snip off a few of the few of the territories here. I really would want to vassalize them, but I don't believe that's an option because they're still equivalent. We'll overcome them. Hey, Johnny, how you doing? Um, do you want to hear my really cool idea? right now because if you do i will send them to you in a private mission and if you uh mission uh message and if you don't want to hear it right now i will send it to you on um i'll send it to you uh elsewhere i liked your Yu-Gi-Oh comment um Escanius, the artist formerly known as sean bean 
<laughs> Should I rename your musketeer, by the way? Um, but yeah, no, we've, we've got a really active chat right now. You can focus on the stream, sir. I'm able to wait. Okay. It's related to Darga's dungeon. I, th I think you are going to like this idea quite a bit. So um, anyways, so what are some of the things I could... Let, let's focus specifically on my military. Um, so I could maybe try and take... All right. Sounds good. Um, I could try and take uh, some of this territory from the Andagoge. And this, this is actually quite appealing because, of course, it means that I'm going to be able to secure a bit more territory for myself. Effectively, I sort of add this to my my natural domain. Uh, whereas now, sort of, I'm I'm blocked off. I well, formerly blocked off. Obviously, if I want to, if I want to cause some trouble for my vassal, uh, we can move through here. But probably better that I don't do that. Um, so uh, option number one for my military is to kick these guys worth it down. Uh, number two, try and go for a bigger war. I have a feeling that if I go after the Zathorian Confederation and their um, and their overall uh, federation, I am going to get clobbered um, because they have got some, you know, balanced in power fleets and um, enough of sort of an alliance to cause me a lot of grief about it. Um, I could... Uh, take my fleets and dedicate them towards the Guardians. Because uh, there's actually quite a few in my territory. And that's an incredibly appealing op uh, option, especially because it gives it gives me access to some, uh, some fairly powerful items. Uh, the reason why I'm focusing on the special event, uh, there's, a, there's a number of, of reasons. Number one, um, it's clear that when the it's clear that when the ships are uh, are out of the area, uh, the AI is absolutely sending science ships and construction ships to examine the terminal egress, which means that they have intentions of expanding into that territory. Now, it's not clear to me um, that anybody's going to be trying that in the next little while because I think most. It looks like most species uh, no longer have a direct link to the to the L gates anymore. I'm actually the only one who has kept mine, at least on on first glance. So that's a bonus for me. Uh, number two, uh, I can dedicate my fleets to these guardians, but of course I always need to keep an eye at the howling vortex for the very reason that if I don't then it's anyone's guess as to when um, it's anyone's guess as to when the the bad guys are gonna show up. I am a little curious about Right, it was tactical response here, was going to reinforce the Grand Herald, the Rapid Strike Fleet was my replacement, and the Strategic Readiness Fleet needs to get a complete, uh, kind of a, a complete retrofit. Okay, I remember what we're doing now. So we're going to take a bit of a break on, um, on immediately going into the Howling Vortex, and this is just so we can sort of rearm everything. We just had a big fight with the, um, with the na uh, nanobots. And we need to we need to sort of catch our breath. What we're going to be doing from that position. So these guys are going to be healing up and hopefully doing some upgrading. I think I already started building a shipyard. Yes. So in a few months we're going to uh, we're going to be able to um, to do some upgrades here. But basically the idea is that I am going to park a couple of very strong fleets in the Howling Vortex while one of my science ships goes and explores all the planets. Then we're going to take a, um, a construction ship and we are going to build a star base in the terminal egress. And we're going to put a shipyard there. Effectively, it's going to be sort of our, one of our main hubs in terms of generating ships. Obviously, this will allow me to project power pretty much anywhere in the galaxy. 
Uh, but on top of that, it'll also give me sort of a, uh, a toehold in terms of trying to finally take out the, the nanobots. Now, this is going to require pretty much all of, my, uh, all of my resources, and it might be a mission that I abandon partway through. Um, but at the moment, I'm justifying the choice because I want to... I effectively want to start developing all of these worlds at some point. And the reason I haven't been doing so is that it carries with it this constant threat that the um, that the bots are going to be coming back. So if I can't succeed at claiming the terminal egress, I will upgrade the base that's in the Howling Vortex. I'll set it up with a bunch of I'll set it up with a bunch of uh, um, <clears throat> uh, like defensive platforms and whatnot, and then we'll uh, we'll try and take our our intermediate. Um, sort of our intermediate position. But in this case, this is going to be about dedicating our ships towards fighting back the Grey Menace and then, um, you know, claiming that uh, claiming that sector for ourselves. The good news is, is that if the, AI, if the bots behave anything like they have with us, anytime the AI tries and pokes a science ship inside there, um, the, the nanobots are going to come and eat them. So, <laughs> hey, Al Infamous. Okay. Let's just take a quick audit of the... Okay, it looks like we have an unemployment. That doesn't make sense. Negative one jobs. Oh, right, because of the servants. That's uh, that's okay then. Uh, we've got an open slot, but it's not clear what we want to do with it because, of course, we have seven available jobs still. So I'm going to pass there. Uh, we're going to move up to 10, so everything's okay with Paradia. Same story with the monument. Kabji is on track. Uh, Okul, same deal. Ceridon, Mublar. Yeah, Mublar's going to get what it needs. This is being built up. Okay, my Forge World. We, again, have a surplus that I'm not sure what to do with. I kind of want to upgrade this. Um, I want to upgrade this to Mega Forge, but I've got slack in the in the job market. I am at least reasonably happy that we now finally have proper sectors for all of this stuff. I already looked over these, didn't I? Okay, now this is one I want to pay attention to because there's no available jobs and we need to find uh, two more. So so give me two clerk jobs. It kind of pains me to do this, but uh, I do need uh, some of the housing, I think. So we'll work with that for now. Um, Sosta is at 20. It's got two available. Civilian Industries will add another two, so we need one more uh, job available. And in this case, I don't really need the farms, but it is the thing that uh, Sosta is better at. So Kraxima. Uh, Kraxima has maxed out their energy. They've got one job, but that'll unlock a new building slot. So I'm going to kick that can down the road. Tiber is my refinery world. It's doing exactly what I want it to do and it'll unlock a new slot. Nafkravas, same story. Uh, Betria is a new colony. And this world is in trouble. I mean, I can afford this now, so I'll do it. Um, the big problem with the unrest is uh, due to the... Basically, it's just due to all the slaves. So the weird thing for me is that I have a bunch of servants. Um, and I would have thought that I could just move them off the world. So if I do resettle, and let's say we've got, you know, old Alvania... Well, maybe not old Alvania. Let's say... Um, use Sosta as an example and I say okay we've got a servant here so we move it over. oh okay actually we've got some slack here so in that case um, I'm gonna take a slightly different angle on this um, every planet that doesn't have one of these servants will now get a servant um, and if memory serves, I went from Old Alvania down below. So Mublar, Nafgravas. Okay, Mublar gets one. Okay. 
part of this is just so I can... Um, These things look so similar, so I gotta be careful. Um, part of this is just so that I can minimize the... Um, I think Sasta already got one. Yeah. There we go, okay. So uh, the reason, I believe the reason why it's set up like this is, <clears throat> excuse me, because I have um, sort of this set up, I have to, effectively I need to like properly downscale the uh, the operations, which I mean, may be fair enough, right? Uh, we've got the cyto -revi revitalization centers right now, for instance, and like, well, maybe I want to dismantle that in favor of um, just making the planet smaller overall. Um, I'm not, 100% convinced by that argument, if I'm completely honest. Um, I think there are better things that I can be doing with uh, with the population right now. But effectively, what I'm trying to do is work out the... I'm trying to balance out the population a little bit better. So we've got 7 Akano Variatus versus 57 Aztani, which is, of course, why uh, there's so much crime. Uh, it's just because we've the planet's out of control and we don't really have anything to um, to assert control over the over the population. Okay, um, we should be chugging along with our ships. Let me just take a minute and... I wish I was a little bit better at these. Yeah, you know what, I'm actually going to let this queue run through on its own and then we'll figure out what my IOUs are after that because I've got a few notes here that um, I can't make a ton of sense of. So I think we're ready to to move ahead. Again, a lot of this is going to be Discord about... Seeding in progress. A lot of this is going to be about sort of widening my industrial base, getting the fleet back on track. If I can, I'd also like to redirect a construction ship to get the Kabji system a little bit more fortified. Construction finalized. But we'll take these things one step at a time. Finalized. You should just be a fanatic purifier, no problem with the Xenopops then. Johnny, do you think that um, do you think that dwarves are fanatic purifiers? Speaking of, I've not forgotten them. We've got a little bit of a pulse inside the channel right now. Johnny Big Time himself is in the channel. Um, Johnny, I believe, is going to be moving on to Days Gone. Now, he had a little bit of difficulty with Rainbow Six Siege. Did you get that fixed, by the way, Johnny? Um, it seems that the difficulty he was running into, though, is unrelated to the... Unrelated to the um, internet so much as he was just having some, uh, some difficulties with the... Just moving the science ship into position. Uh, he seemed to be having more difficulty with um, with something about Rainbow Six Siege rather than the internet itself, although I might be wrong about that. But one way or the other, um, I, it's, I'm cautiously optimistic about um, the state of Johnny's stream at the moment. He definitely seems to be... Uh, it definitely seems to be kind of at a state where, where things are going well. Um, and so... Uh, this is good news for all of us because Johnny is one of my favorite streamers on Twitch. Complete. I always say that and I always mean it. Uh, Johnny, again, it's kind of funny because I was talking with him System about uh, the cool thing that I mentioned on Twitter, but I can't say out loud yet. Uh, okay, Grand Herald is repaired. In this case, because we've got the shipyard now, I'm going to start doing some upgrades. Oh, nope, we've got 48 days, so... Uh, what I am going to do, though, is in anticipation of... So it's... I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to wind up replacing this at some point, but having a crew quarters just so that we can store stuff for a bit longer is kind of nice. And then eventually I'm going to switch that into something that allows me to trade with Zero Corp. So i got to wait a little bit to before upgrading, though. Anyways, um... 
Our research has progressed. So even though Johnny and I are quite different in terms of the types of streams that we do, uh, and definitely sort of the approaches that we take, um, I have had, first of all, I obviously had a great time uh, streaming A Way Out with him. Uh, he's one of my favorite people to play games with in general, and it's just been my effort to try and capture a little bit more of that dynamic on streams, because I like to think that you guys would enjoy that as well. Um, but Johnny's been doing these really good franchise playthroughs, and I think he probably doesn't get enough credit for it right now, because he, The Witcher obviously takes up so much of, uh, of sort of the oxygen for any kinds of, of runs like that. Like, effectively, you become a Witcher streamer when you do something like that. So Johnny does do more things, and of course he's done The Witcher 3 now, all of the DLC, everything like that, and I think he said he was going to be moving on to Days Gone, and I think one of the things I can say, I don't personally have a lot of interest in Days Gone, but the thing is, is that knowing that Johnny is going to be playing it, and especially because I know Johnny rides a bike, um... I am immediately much more interested in it now, seeing him cover it. I think Johnny is one of the few broadcasters where you could rely on him to create uh, this added value. Like, I think Johnny is one of those few people who could play a genuinely terrible game, and he would still uh, he would still be making it fun. Um, so, in any case, I know I sing his praises to high heaven, <laughs> the high heavens. He is a really fun guy. He's got a great attitude both towards streaming, but also just in terms of his charisma and the level of entertainment that he brings to his stream. Absolutely tireless in terms of the work that he does as well. I wind up feeling ashamed whenever I slack off on some of the stream stuff that I do, just because he so consistently delivers in terms of his broadcasts. I honestly think the only time that he doesn't bring you know, everything to the stream is when he is quite literally cut off by technology. <laughs> Um, even then he's probably bringing it, we just can't see it. Um, but as always, uh, I know some of you may not have checked him out yet. I definitely encourage it. And if you're on YouTube and wondering why I haven't played the game yet, you can go to twitch.tv slash Johnny underscore big underscore time. And, uh, you can actually check him out for yourself, but he's somebody who's worth it. Johnny, were you ever going to put your videos on YouTube? You'd be famous. All right, climate restoration. By advancing our understanding of atmospheric transformation, we will be able to uh, terraform even the most ecologically devastated worlds. So good news there, although that's going to be very expensive, so I'm going to need to bu uh, boost my energy. Um, penal colony is definitely the cheapest. Um, leadership enhancement, eh, I mean, that's not bad. Um, I think in this case, though, I'm going to go for the cheap stuff. This is partly just so that I can try and get the technology boost and potentially uh, try to vassalize a rival. Okay, I'm gonna System watch this shipyard analyzed. with bated breath. One month to go. Construction finalized. <laughs> So, same deal with, uh... Same deal with the construction ship, just fill in as many holes as I can until we can come crashing through the Howling Vortex. I'm doing this mostly to just get rid of some of the holes in my, um... in my, uh, my borders. Okay, surely the... the shipyard is done by now. Now, this is gonna be a slow upgrade, but... It will be a worthwhile one. So what we're going to do here, we're transfer out the Titan. These guys should get their upgrade. We're looking at about a thousand in terms of... Planetary worksite established. So the drawback here is that... Oops, it takes a while. But again, we're... That puts us in a stronger position for crashing through the Howling Vortex and causing problems for people. Okay, let's get you... Oh god, there's so many farms. Um... Not an efficient use of the space, but at this point I think I'm going to prioritize energy no matter what. Uh, Mentoka, I apparently... That's Tani Variatus. It's 
not have a job. All right, well, let's find a place with lots of farms. Betria can use them. Now, again, it's important to remember that I am doing this because I am neurotic. Um, there are actually ways that you can get the game to automate all this stuff for you. I just have this some... Seeding in progress. You clipped a funny moment of Our his the other night with uh, with his computer. What happened? Do you mind me saying? Or uh, do you mind saying? Or is it better? Uh, is it better? Actually, if you want, you can just put the link in here. That probably makes more sense. Uh, okay, advanced afterburners. This improved version of the standard afterburners provides an even greater boost to the ship's combat speed. So let's go for ideally something combat oriented. God, I really want... I am going to go for the Corvette. I, I really was going to go for the mining first, but the Corvette hull points are just too good. Obviously, more survivability is going to help me in the oncoming struggle. Uh, what's up next? Okay, similar idea. The only problem is I don't remember where... <laughs> I don't remember where I was going to dump everybody. Gotta be some farms I can put someone somewhere. Preferably unoccupied ones. There we go, uh, Afris Prime. And again, if, if I am really worried about it, I can always just change the, I can always just change the sort of the breeding rights. Um, but I do, I do actually want to have a good slave population to be able to, you know, just get them to work on, on some of the, the hard, uh, hard labor. Uh, it was 10 minutes after trying to get his game to start. <laughs> Is this one? Okay, here. For those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about with Johnny Big Time, this will be my first moment. This is courtesy of, uh, Ascanius. This is Johnny Big Time apparently having a hard time with his... We'll call him Johnny Hard Time. This is apparently him having some difficulty getting his, uh, his stream going. Oh, so I think this probably was more of a you had to be there moment for it. But um, I was actually going to say that what you did get to see there was uh, Johnny's um, Johnny's uh, much fancier layouts and his America bandana. <laughs> All right. Uh, Maka says, yeah, you had a game where you thought you were behind in multiplayer. You're hearing everyone go, oh, hey, I just unlocked Titans. I'm like, but I'm stuck on destroyers because uh, cruiser tech never came up. But somehow you had more combat power in each, each of your fleets. One of the other things, too, like um, this is one of the reasons why it was really hard for me to, to have conversations about my fleets. Because everyone's like, you know, your fleet power is so much bigger. Um, you know, like, why are you why are you running away? And so much of my fleet power was built into that Titan. And so if they were able to get rid of all the screening sh uh, ships, you absolutely can take down a Titan with a with a fleet of Corvettes, um, even with less power than it, because the Titan's just simply not able to shoot everything out of the sky on time. Um, yeah, I think probably I wrecked it by having the Stellaris music in the background. I'm sorry about that, Ascanius. Um but um the yeah, Amaka, it's like the combat power is a helpful it's a useful heuristic but it is not the last word uh for reasons that i think are pretty obvious when people th think about them um but don't necessarily like they're not necessarily front of mind when um when you 
like when the time comes. Okay, an Istran raiding fleet has been detected approaching our borders, and intercepted communication indicates that they have been hired by a rivaling foreign power to attack our systems. They are transmitting a message directed towards us on an open channel. On screen. Hey! You have many enemies, Dwamak. They not like you very much. Even pay us to bash your systems. We happy to oblige. Go to red alert. All right. Uh, so the Istran are... Right. Um, they are most likely going to be coming through the Ofang system. Now, there's an argument for me to be upgrading the Ofang system anyway. I don't have the uh, resources for it at the moment. Um, so what I think we'll do is we'll just sort of sit where we are right now, and if we see any of the nasty raiders, we'll just um, we'll make our move. Let's reverse engineer the technology. And can I? We've already exhibited the artifact. Construction finalized. Oh, Kabji is back to. I'm assuming they're in the same boat where they. Yep, we just have a lot of. Oh, I see the problem. Yeah, we don't have. Uh, we don't have enough Akano. All right, was it Afris? Yeah, we were sending these guys to Afris. Sorry guys, just need a quick minute. Uh, I am checking to see if something has happened on YouTube. Cool. Nothing has happened. <laughs> Sorry, I know I shouldn't be distract. Oh god, I just lost uh, OBS Studio. Okay. I think one of the things that I'm setting myself up for um, on Afris is like getting to a point where I, um, I have too many Astani on the planet and not enough uh, Akano. I think we're actually going to be bred out. <laughs> um, but what are you going to do, right? Yeah, so currently it looks like they're moving away from Mublar. Too many of these things growing. But I thought I saw us click to select a prioritize species on Oh god. Yeah, we're we're <laughs> We're changing that lickety split. I had no idea I could specify a preferred species. I am going to do this on all of my worlds. I realize this is going to be tedious, but this is going to save me so much, uh, so much pain. Uh, more, I, I more a um, one-child policy half truth. I'm, I'm not, I'm not like a, I'm not an evil dwarf, not a chaos dwarf. Just. Uh, 
It's nice, nice to have the right species. Um, obviously knowing this, you know, knowing this at the time, I, if I had known this when, um, at, at the beginning, I probably would have had a slightly easier time of things, but I'm not particularly upset that we bred a lot of good slaves. Um, clearly we, uh. Clearly, we've we've made progress with uh, with what we have already. Okay, I've got a couple of colonies with uh, free like technician jobs. So we're gonna send him from Alvania to Ilfon. Nice thing about this one is that this um, this actually winds up getting me some precious. Uh, precious energy. These guys will show up eventually. Again, I'm not too sad about this taking a while, just because, you know, I get some ships upgraded. Um, we can sort of reconstitute the fleet and then just go back to... Just go back to doing our upgrades. Let's make sure that the Titan is docked. Together we will build a brighter future. All right, we're back to having too many minerals. That's, again, not a huge surprise. Uh, we'll just sell 5,000. And physics from researchers plus 20%. Three dimensions, inextricable from the fourth. All right, so physics. I can exploit dark matter. I can get a gamma laser. I can get a plasma cannon. I can get 5% to energy weapons, which would be a terrible choice right now. Or I can get hyper shield. Now, hyper shields are probably my best option because they're the fastest. Okay, what are we looking at here? The Strategic Readiness Fleet. So I'm mildly tempted to just slam this all together. It's too big though. Yeah, it exceeds the command limit. So, um... Oh, well, they're already upgrading on Alvis, so... But I have a feeling that none of these upgrades are going to happen until the new ships are done building. Yeah. So we have another wait ahead of our <laughs> ahead of us, but again, that's not the end of the world. Okay, now one thing I'm curious about, I don't seem to have any colony ships under construction at the moment. Also I have a free 5000, so this is the point I should be considering a, another terraforming job. It looks like it's all tomb worlds at this point. I've got an ocean world, Savannah world. Maybe let's try and find something a little closer to home. Yeah, look at all these beautiful tun... Er, hang on. Tundra world. I think we want to turn it into an alpine world. Uh, is that the best I can do, though? I'm not going to get it right away because it's close to the Howling Vortex. Um, yes. Not the most exciting choice I've ever made, but it has to be done at some point. I'd like to also upgrade some of my star bases, but clearly at this point... Okay, I need to figure out what I want to do on this world. Uh, clearly at this point, I, um, I have higher priorities in terms of getting my existing infrastructure um, or my existing military up to where it needs to be. Okay, looks like we've got kind of the colony in a box um, built, and this is in my tech... Um, a tech world. So what I am going to do though is we're going to build a couple more generators. Actually, you know what, we'll just go for all three and get that out of the way and then we'll build an energy grid. Uh, normally I wouldn't want to do this. Clearly we benefit from having having more energy and then of course we can go back to building the labs and whatnot. There is a temptation on Alvis to build yet another 
Um, build yet another ship. Yeah, you know what? I am going to build another shipyard. It's a pretty minor investment in terms of uh, in terms of alloys, and it's just going to make my my ability to produce more ships that much more attractive. Okay, so we want these guys to merge with the fleet that's currently upgrading. But I don't oh, think there's that many it. left. I was wrong about that. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll just add them up to the upgrade. Okay, create a penal colony. Through the development of uh, special penal worlds, criminals can be rehabilitated through honest hard labor. Some may be in need of permanent rehabilitation. Um, well, if I go for... Oh, create thrall world. Disables the construction of city districts and most buildings on the planet. Allows for the construction of slave huts. Free pops can no longer grow on the planet. Thrall world modifier added, giving the following effects. Pop growth speed plus 50%. This actually makes a ton of sense if you've got things like mineral-rich worlds. Um, I did not realize that you could get to that level of specialization. I think a resort world makes a little more sense, though. So, create a resort world. Uh, it gives the following effects. Other empire colonies, 15% amenities, 15% immigration pull, habitability plus 100%, plus one clerk job per two. So, yeah. Um... Sacrificing one planet into turning it into a result. To this very day, you still see tweets about pineapple on pizza. I wish people were more interesting. <laughs> Scientific progress attained. I'm not saying you're not allowed to have your own opinions on things or something like that, but I kind of feel like the pineapple on pizza thing is done. That's a Canadian invention, by the way. Uh, Corvette hull points, plus 100. The latest generation of Corvette hulls have optimized structural integrity fields and improved bulkheads. Um, so I can go for better cruisers, I can go, my cheapest option would be habitat. Now the fact of the matter is I don't think I'm going to be able to take any advantages of habitats. Um, I just don't think I'm going to have the resources for it. But following my rule of doing the cheapest, we'll go for the habitat. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's a decent combo. It's not my first choice of pizza, but I usually like if there's the option and I have more than one slice, I'm I'll usually take it. Okay, scum and villainy on Gl uh, Glabloshki. Uh, crime continues to be a problem on Gabloshi, and an extensive criminal underworld has now taken root on the planet. Some areas have descended into lawlessness or have been taken over completely by criminal organizations. This is intolerable. Criminal underworld modifier added, giving the following effects. Crime plus 15, criminal jobs plus 1, and plus 1 criminal job per uh, 33 planet crime. Okay, we have got to do something about this now. Uh, let's find... So the Cytorevitalization Center is my... My first... Oh, you know what? We've already got precinct houses. We just don't have people working in the... in the enforcer job. Yeah, so it reduces, reduces trade value. Construction complete. Create a penal colony. Increases crime and immigration pull to the planet. Reduces crime on all other owned planets. <laughs> I mean, it's tempting. I do think I need to find... What I need to do is I need to find my smallest planets that are in sectors I'm not going to use. And then that's where I need to make like my resorts and my... 
Well, I mean, what what when you think about it, so I'd, I'd put it to you this way. Uh, you've seen Breaking Bad, right? So effectively what's happened on this planet is where Walter White previously was under maybe, let's say, the servant or the technician category. They're no longer producing... What's happening basically is that out of this population, it's no longer actively producing something that's useful to me. Um, what's happening instead is that the work, the labor force is now dedicated towards reducing my trade value. So it's not just that I lose out on what these jobs otherwise could be doing. It's that I'm losing out on the resources that would have been generated uh, by these people working. Now, the thing is, is that I've got a lot of servants here. Actually, you know what? It might, it actually might make more sense because when you think about it, like, I'm not generating any research, not generating any alloys. I'm, I'm really only generating stuff from entertainers and doctors. So maybe we are due to actually uh, destroy some of these buildings. So let's say uh, one alloy foundry, we'll demolish that. And we're currently using the doctors, so we'll leave that be for now. Um... It's not in the right sector, so we'll, we'll get rid of the Research Institute, because I'm not actually going to use that. Coffee's for closers. Alright. So now what this should do is this should actually free up a bunch of space for me to start uh, distributing the, uh, the entertainers across some other systems. So we've already got an Estani on Old Alvania. I have a feeling that this is going to be true for a lot of these uh, worlds at the top, but I don't know where to stop, so Rorius is good. Okay, Kabji. Oops, damn it. They're a clerk. Okay, so apparently we actually have other jobs for these guys to do. Huh, did I already... Looks like I've already distributed a bunch of these things. Uh... Oh, damn it. Um, that's fine. That should redistribute anyway. So again, we still have too many uh, Estani on this planet, but we've sort of reduced the population a little bit, which means that the crime should eventually be going away. So we've got nine extra jobs. Okay, well, that's, that's not bad, actually. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to find my worlds that have... So, like, Mublar is a perfect example of, of a place where I can maybe put some... Uh, so, let's say Old Alvania, Mublar. Yeah, some of these aren't as developed. Okay, well, we'll do... A, we'll do two for Old Alvania and two for Mublar. And then we'll sit back a bit. And I think we're back to capacity for the entertainers. 
Okay, so we're starting to make a dent in the crime. It's still going to be a problem, but if we didn't get that criminal underworld modifier, we'd actually be down to 83, I think. Construction complete. Oh yeah, I should actually start building. Uh, okay, so we've got six jobs available here, so no point in building the same story, six jobs, uh, four, so I need to figure out what we're doing there. Well, that's that answers that, although at least here I can build some bureaucracy. No, I can't because I don't have the building yet. Uh, same story. Generator world. Okay, this one I actually need to make some decisions for. So, um, we have kind of like one of everything. Um, so I could go for some more unity. I could go for... Right, they've already got crystalline caverns. I think the Galactic Stock Exchange is a empire only. So what I'm going to do... Oof, that's not good. Okay, so Galactic Stock, I gotta... So what does this give me? 20% extra trade value. Oh, it's a planet limit. Okay, well, see, this is the thing. Like, out of all of the trade, um, the world's where I would want. Oh, does it not list trade? That feels like an oversight. Um, yeah, this isn't good either. All right, you know what? We're going to say screw it to the, <laughs> to the stock exchange just because it's too hard to think about. Um, but what this doesn't have is a hollow theater. So we get two jobs out of that. Um, we're a little short on housing, so we get two jobs out of this, and then we can upgrade. The question is, what do we upgrade to? Um, I don't really want to build in either of the... Uh, I'm doing the wimp choice. I'm a little tempted to take some of my space System dwarves and just throw them onto lost. this world to to deal with some of the problems. Old Elvania has 104 trade value. If I could find... Oh, you System know what I can do? Analyzed. No, but this is the problem. I've got the Hyper Entertainment Forums, which are going uh, to interact with the Ministry of Culture. So that's actually not a good call. Administrators produce unity and amenities. And if I were to replace it with a galactic stock, stock exchange. We'd get trade value and amenity. Yeah, you know what? So bureaucratic complex is nice. Um, and it does have like a planet limit and stuff like that. Um, I think we're going to switch that one out. The only other thing I can think of doing is to replace the robot assembly uh, plant with a... Um, with a better building. Because the capital world probably shouldn't be... shouldn't be focusing on that. Okay, I think I've got some idle ships. Hey! New archaeological event. The alien glyphs above the door have been translated as follows. I am Zarklan, the guardian of Maz Tarb, the prophet of Zva. In a galaxy awash with spite and hatred, I have chosen to seclude myself here. Proceed if ye be worthy. After combing through the first chamber for anything of interest, archaeologists discovered a tiny, con uh, a tiny, tiny concealed wall panel. When pressed, the ancient door rumbled open. The second chamber can now be accessed. Okay. Let's just take a minute here and get my construction ships back on track. So it'd be nice if I could get rid of these amoeba, but I can't, so we will build what we can. New construction ship, similar idea, build what we can, expand where we can. Uh, other thing that I have been neglecting is where 
uh, where I can colonize. So this is currently being terraformed. This is available, but I don't want to go there yet. Uh, this is owned by the Drake. Okay, all of that's being terraformed. This I don't want to touch. So the question is, do I really want to be building colonies this far away from the main world? There's a good argument for it. Um... I think we're going to wait, though. Construction complete. I can start terraforming some more planets, though. It's a little tempting to try and just save up to get rid of the tomb worlds, but in this case I know I'm going to want to expand down to, to all of these planets at some point. So we'll just do kind of a natural progression. Partly I also just want to identify where uh, the capital worlds for all these new systems should be. This is probably my droid that's... Oh no! Um, okay, well, <laughs> sorry, but you're going to the crime planet. Oh, I think I know what happened. He probably got replaced by a robot. Construction complete. Our research I has probably promised. should not have the science ship just be hanging here like this. Okay, hyper shields. These reinforced and hardened energy shields are incredibly powerful. The protection they offer is second to none. This, of course, is going to be another excuse for me to just sit on my hands and not upgrade. Or, well, I mean, I'm going to be upgrading my ships, but I'm going to be, like, forever upgrading them. Gateway travel is a little tempting because we are, we are actually behind our rivals in that sense. Neutron launchers are also tempting, though, because they're military-oriented. Um, only because they are cheaper... And because I don't have direct access to a gate, I'm going for the neutron launchers. But normally I would want mobility, because especially since the um, apocalypse, um, especially since the apocalypse ex uh, expansion, uh, so much of this game is just reduced down to can can you get more things to a place than your opponent? And it's good for that. It makes it a little bit more of a thoughtful, a thoughtful experience rather than just I have big number that you know. Well, I guess I kind of reduced it down to... Um, what are you doing here? Construction finalized. Um, I suppose I just, just kind of reduced that. But anyways, I think you guys get what I mean. Um, it's, nice to, uh, it's nice to kind of be able to think, oh, you know, I need to deal with the fact that there might be some enemies coming through this Hostile area. It's like, oh, there we go. Detected. 12k raiding fleet. All right. So I think my best call right now is to cancel the upgrades. It would be nice not to have to. Um, but we will... We will defend Ofang. So obviously they're going to get to Ofang earlier than us. Um... But we will uh, we'll be there to mop them up when the time when the time comes. I guess we can bring the the derelict class ship as well. Don't just be too late. Okay, new colony is good. Uh, similar idea, or actually, I guess I need to build um, build my infrastructure. I think at this point I'm just going to be, I, I mentioned this before, I think I'm just going to be prioritizing, um, I'm going to be prioritizing energy, even if it's not the quote-unquote best option on a planet. Um, I wanted to give them bureaucracy, where is it? There we go. Again, this is just following the usual pattern. Um, the reason for wanting to build the bureaucrat... Oh, that was the thing I missed out on, Unity. I probably should... Uh, I will rebuild that bureaucratic complex when my Station robots... Under assault. Okay. 
Ah. This is going to be a challenge. So notice what's happened here, right? We were um, we're sort of equipping ourselves to um, prepare for uh, a reply to these guys. Unfortunately, um, the raiders arrived. So where normally this fleet would be defending at the Howling Vortex, we can't do that because the... Um, the Istran Void Raiders are showing up at Ofang. So we're going to slightly realign some of our priorities here. Um, let's see. Okay, so these guys are actually in reasonably good shape. So we're going to change this around a little bit. Um, I know this is going to be boring, but I'm going to reimagine my... I'm going to reimagine my fleet designations. Um, so I'm just going to tab out. I had like a spreadsheet for all of this stuff, but I'm going to, I'll talk about it, but um, I sadly can't show this on the screen without trying to find a way to crop everything. So I've got 140 command points to deal with it, and I tend to work in 16... I tend to work in 16 um, ship... or uh, Sorry, 16, com, 16 point um, units. So effectively with 100... with 140 you basically get 8 full... Um, you get 8 full units. So when I say a full unit that means 1 Titan, 2 battleships, 4 cruisers... Um, Eight destroyers or sixteen corvettes. Um, so we'll start by one of uh, one of everything. So that's Titan battleship, cruiser, destroyer, corvette. So that's five accounted for. Except of course we don't have any Titans. Ah, actually that makes things a little bit easier for me. So we'd say that would be two sets of battleships, two sets of cruisers, two sets of destroyers, two sets of corvettes. So that gives me basically. Um, one and three quarter units to go with and usually I try and go for the screening uh, ships in those particular cases so um, let's say I don't know split it down the middle probably makes the most sense so three destroyers six um, corvettes All right, so I'm actually go I'm going to formally write this out on a piece of paper in like actual numbers because I always wind up doing these calculations. They always slow down the stream. So we've got, so that's 38 Corvettes right now. Um, we've got what, 16 plus three. So that's 19 destroyers. Um, Cruisers, four battleships, and in the absence of Titans, that's going to be my new default fleet. Four battleships, eight cruisers, 19 destroyers, and 38 corvettes. I might change that pattern in the future, but I, I don't actually have a really good mental model for making all of this work. Um, so this sort of seems to be my... Sec not not as terrible as it otherwise could be kind of fleet. Um, okay, so in this case, this would mean I need to kick out three cruisers. I might reevaluate this choice, but for now. Uh, and they're probably all experienced. Yeah. So, one, two, three. Um... I need five more destroyers and... Okay. So now, more importantly, can we get you guys... Sadly, we don't have enough. All right. 
So these guys will merge. Oop, one too many Corvettes, I think. Two too many Corvettes. <laughs> hey, Valken. Yeah, everybody's asking me about uh, the WoW of Warcraft. I I don't begrudge anyone um, their uh, their memories, but I don't feel particularly compelled to play it personally. Okay, so clearly we've got some slack, um, and that's because I need seven more destroyers and... Um, we're actually good for the... Actually, sorry. Before I go any further... Um, let's just get this to where it needs to be. Oh, wow. This is a mess. Yeah, I was originally going to try and... Um, I was originally going to try and make these numbers make a little more sense, but this I don't think is going to because... Yeah, none of that, none of that makes sense. Let's try that again. Four. Eight cruisers. Eventually 19 destroyers. Oops. And apparently these Corvettes don't exist anymore. That doesn't seem right. Okay, so that's what the ideal fleet should look like. At the moment, though, we need to fill out... Uh, we need to fill some of the gaps. So actually, in this case, I think we're just going to go for as much firepower as we can get. And in this case, this is going to mean that I bring in the battleships. I may not actually be able to fit them. Yeah. Thought it was going a little, a little too hard. <laughs> yeah, what are we looking for? Okay, I've got room for another... Looks like another cruiser. And two more Corvettes. So, I mean, this is a little bit of a mess, uh, the way it is right now, but it'll, it'll give me something to... Um, to sort of reply in the Howling Vortex with. <laughs> People are overrated. <laughs> you said it, not me, Valken. Now I am curious what they do after... Okay, so it looks like they are trying to... It looks like they are trying to make a move to the next... The next system, so I gotta get out of here Our with my science. Okay, create a resort world with careful study devoted to landscaping, climate control, and the science of fun. Construction of entire worlds dedicated to leisure can be made possible. Now, let's say habitability. Not the most exciting I can go for, but this isn't keeping in my, uh, my plans. Um, at some point, I'm going to need to audit my planets and find the smallest one. Um, that sounds like a good... Okay, well, Lessum actually sounds like a really great one to terraform and turn. So yeah, I want to find two small planets and basically turn them into a penal colony and a, um, and a resort world. But Now, it's possible that my fleet is going to be able to take on the ship in the Howling Vortex... Or the fleet in the Howling Vortex anyway. Uh, looks like they ran off. So I'm kind of okay with this cat and mouse game. Um, I'm not going to reclaim the Howling Vortex, though. Um, we're going to take my main fleet. We're going to punish the Void Raiders. I would have gone into the fleet manager, but I know better than to cause myself that tragedy.
we have yes we do have three shipyards ticking away at this composition so at some point oops. all right well we knew this was coming there is a temptation to try and uh you know try and beef up this defensive platform just i obviously my higher priority would be on the uh my higher priority would be on the lost. um the L gate. System resources analyzed. So this is going to be unfortunate. Obviously, it's not going to be able to hold its own, but we will uh, we'll take that small loss and we will we will reply when we can. Okay. So again, this is not going to go to the Howling Vortex yet, just because there's like I'm just going to get gobbled up. I'm actually going to move you around like that. Um, I think in this case I am going to send them to Kabji just because I don't see any immediate... Oof, that's a long trip. I'm going to do it just because I think I'm a little reluctant to actually commit these guys to um, to taking out the Uh, to getting the toehold in the Howling Vortex. I might. I, I need to think on this a little bit. But. Okay, so they're going to start bombing uh, Nafgravas. The good news is, is that we have... Basically, it's until... We have a certain level of um, devastation Planetary before they can start attacking, uh, attacking populations. All right. Same story here. We're just going to crank out a bunch of generator districts. So if my guys don't arrive by the time the devastation is up to 25%, um, that's a problem. If they do arrive in time... Oh yeah, it's gonna gonna be a mild annoyance to deal with this, but otherwise we can uh, we'll do a good job of slapping around the the raiders. System resources and if we're lucky, we won't lose a lot of ships to. Oh. Okay, they were like on their way to doing something nasty and then they thought better of it. <laughs> Hostile reactionaries engaged. All right, now we get to watch the excitement. Construction finalized. Best case scenario is we don't lose any ships and we just need to repair. Construction complete. Titan doesn't know what to do with himself. The Istran fleet that vowed to raid our space has been destroyed as a result of fleet action in the Ofang system. No survivors have been reported amongst the debris. All right, we lost four corvettes to that. That's a damn shame. So what we're going to do, uh, we will tell it to upgrade. Okay, so they're going to the system that I want them to go to, and we're now going to go to Alvis. This is kind of why I have these fleets set up the way that I do. Shockingly, we do not have enough Corvettes to replace. That's a pity. Uh, okay, well, we'll... Um, are we building more Corvettes? Yes, but not soon enough. Uh, we are short on destroyers anyway. Um, okay, we'll take, we'll take what we've got does mean my main fleet is a bit understaffed but we can always take them from the other the other group and we'll move our replacement corvettes to the tiaka system our research has progressed Okay, we're up to habitat. Allows the construction of largely self-sustaining orbital habitats. These are, are tempting to build, but again, uh, I need to consider where my resources are being allocated. 
Uh, Starbase upgrade cost sounds like a huge benefit right now. So it's not as cheap as weather control systems, but this will give me a 15% reduction in upgrade costs and 25% improvements in upgrade speeds. So this will allow me to hoard my alloys. And then we're going to go on a complete buying spree on all of these star bases to make them beefier. I also need to start thinking, Aculum, what are you up to right now? This seems like a decent place for me to build another set of shipyards. Got any piracy problems at the moment? Nope. See, piracy is largely contained. Got a couple problems here. It's nothing... I mean, in terms of placement, if I build... What am I looking at? say this is going to be one protective area so that's 24 i still want mine so that's 25 okay can i i can build one more um so it doesn't completely deal with the piracy but we can at least knock it out of two more systems and then of course i'm going to assume that our population growth is eventually going to uh going to take over as well. Okay, we're running out of space, so we'll start with... Oh, that's right, which is also where the, where the bombing happened. Sorry about that, guys. Um, okay, so clerics to begin with. We'll get the housing up. Uh, we'll actually do another batch of that. And this is a forge world, so it is mildly tempting to just hammer out another alloy foundry, but at some point I am actually going to need to upgrade these buildings. So the next question is, actually, you know what? Sucks that I'm doing it, but I am going to build all those generator districts. And I think I'm going to start doing that on most worlds at this point. Okay, so Mintaka, um, can build a special building, but I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with this world yet. It is kind of good for everything. I mean, actually, no, here's the perfect, uh, this is the perfect world for me to build my robot assembly plants, which means that on old Alvania, we can now replace with a bureaucratic complex. And we've got another dwarf complaining that a robot took his job, so we'll send them to the crime planet. It'd be nice if I could still keep the robots being built on Old Alvania, but at this point, um, I kind of feel like I need to optimize my... Um, I kind of need to optimize my, my workforce. Actually, in this case, I'm going to kill the bureaucratic complex because I have the replica complexes that I can build. This is almost done, but of course, I just need to do one upgrade here and we're we're back to full employment. The second chamber is unremarkable, aside from another set of alien glyphs above the closed door. They read, Petty kings issued edicts in my name. Empires waged war in my honor. Fools sang my praises. I would have none of it. No secret panel, uh, wall panel has yet been found that would provide access to a third chamber. Okay. So, I'm just going to take a minute here and see if I have any... Construction complete. Ah, these artifacts can be used as core for a powerful building that rivals those a fallen empire could create. We now have the ability to build a dimensional fabricator on one of our planets. 
That was unexpected. So if I were to replace the luxury residences, which I'm not going to because I actually need this for housing, but if I were, the dimensional fabricator would produce... Whoa! Uh, 100 minerals, uh, two volatile moats, two um, exotic gases, two... Okay, this would be cool, um, but I am absolutely not building it on the capital, and I am not building it right now because I still need energy. Okay, uh, we get another level in terms of harmony. Now, I actually need to be careful in terms of my ascension perks because I'm going to need to start making some choices in terms of uh, what paths I want to go down and also dealing with sort of end game events. But here we'll do the Bulwark of Harmony. All organisms, no matter how perfect, must rely on an immune system to ward off the threat of outside disease. Our society is no different. While in a defensive war with another empire, ship build speed is increased by 33%. In addition, the ship fire rate is increased by 15% for ships within your borders. So let's take a look. Uh, so if I were to pick three techs moving forward, so um, the Arcology project is kind of tempting. Then again, so is Galactic Wonders. Synthetic evolution is kind of a given. Okay, so here's the other way of looking at this. Uh, extra sensor ranges, hyperlane detection range, so on and so forth, nihilistic acquisition. We're gonna knock that off just because it doesn't, um, doesn't really fit with my dwarves. Uh, World Shaper. I mean, being able to turn worlds into Gaia worlds are really cool, um, but do I want it to be one of my last three techs? Let's let's put that on the maybe list and see what else we can do. Uh, boosting my naval capacity by eighty percent and fleet command limit by twenty. Uh, sorry, by eighty and uh, fleet command by twenty. I mean, that's not bad. Um, but obviously, as a percentage of my forces, that number is going to be getting smaller and smaller, and I'm not entirely sure I'm in a state where I really want to be using uh, an Ascension perk for that. Uh, Defender of the Galaxy, now this is a big one. So if there is an endgame crisis and there is uh, an outside invasion that comes after, well, it doesn't have to be outside, but if there's an invasion that comes after us, I would get a bonus against uh, those units. So this is one that I kind of want to reserve. Interstellar Dominion, at this point, um, Starbase influence and claim costs minus 20%. This is, I, if I wanted to get this, I would have gotten this earlier, so we're going to skip that one. Uh, Grasp the Void, Starbase capacity plus 5. Now, this is kind of tempting because I have been saying that I would like to build more Starbases if I can, but it would be better for me to upgrade my existing uh, group. Eternal Vigilance is kind of tempting because obviously that will double down on my sort of my more defensive positioning. And obviously there's going to be some limits in terms of my expansion moving forward. So 25% uh, to star base damage as well as hull points. This is definitely something that will make me very hard to crack. Um, but I'm not actually at the point where I've built some good defensive positions. Galactic Contender. Now this would be, it doesn't have to be an endgame event, but this is definitely a... Uh, this is definitely a tempting one. So the fallen empires cling to the ruins of their decrepit civilizations, ever fearful of the younger and more dynamic races that surround them. Their time has long since passed. So if I wanted to try taking on these uh, these fallen empires, that's uh, a tempting one. Again, I would kind of feel like it would be Defender of the Galaxy or Galactic Contender rather than uh, both. Executive Vigor, I mean... Longer Edicts is nice. It's just I don't quite see the world in which this makes full sense to me yet uh transcendent learning i mean it doesn't hurt to have better uh better leaders but again similar idea do i want this to be one of my last three shared destiny subject integration influence cost minus 50 percent subject trust cap by plus 100 i'm probably going to take feudalism before shared destiny uh voidborn uh so habitat habitability plus 20 percent habitats owned by our empire have space for an additional two districts so this would be if i want to build more planets to live on clearly we've not taken our existing uh worlds up so i'm not quite ready to do that so out of these existing ones uh there's Clearly one of the endgame ones for sure. So we have two left from that. Maybe Eternal Vigilance. Um, Colossus Project is if I want to do Planet Killers. That's a fun one. Uh, I definitely want to do Synthetic Evolution because uh, that's kind of like the last step towards, um, towards my existing. In fact, I should already be 
doubling down in terms of like robot upkeep and pop assembly speeds. I really should be building some more robot uh, buildings on some of the worlds where I have um, where I have like need for manual labor. I'll I'll reevaluate that um, in a little bit. Um, you know, Master Builders, Galactic Wonders, sort of. Well, actually, all of these three kind of come down. Um, these three kind of come down to nice to haves. So I think we've said synthetic evolution for sure. Um, which we can't access yet. I think in this particular case, I am going to sit on this. I'm going to sit on this upgrade because I don't have any of the things that I want to do with it yet. I am, however going to okay this is not a world that needs um robot workers this is one that would benefit from them though so this is a nice little sink for my minerals as well uh, and afgravas is already working on this stuff but we can put them back to this one's a little bit harder to argue for oh they've already got robots jesus all right military academy it is then I'm a little surprised they don't actually have a robot uh, assembly plant, but we'll put that one here, especially because that'll start filling up some jobs that aren't otherwise being taken care of. And right, we said we weren't going to build robots here because they didn't have... Well, let's see what they do with this out of curiosity. I can always switch out the robot uh, plant later, but at the moment... One of the reasons why I wanted to do that is currently I've got lower robot upkeeps, faster robot assembly speeds, and so really um, I should be I should be leveraging that. I shouldn't be uh, I shouldn't just kind of be sitting on my hands and and not taking advantage of the fact that we do do all this stuff faster. Finalized. I'm not upgrading my star bases yet just because I know I'm going to be getting some pretty substantial reductions on that. System resources analyzed. Construction finalized. I have a feeling I've got some idle. Yep. Okay, so construction ship. Same story here. We'll just um, we'll deal with what we've what we've got immediate access to. Um, now, in terms of expansion, let's get these guys going in opposite directions. So we'll get you to build for energy, and we'll get you to build for science. Also, um, I'm probably going to be quite light after this, but I am going to do. I'm going to start converting this tomb world here. I'm assuming that we're going to have to deal with the. Um, we're going to have to get the. Uh, the. Um, the curators and the um, the artisans are going to be coming asking for money soon, but we still have uh, 10,000 energy. So, Magnetic disruption. The strong magnetic, magnetic field around Fargus Prime has always caused some problems with electronic instruments on the surface, but recently the effect on our computers has been especially notable. So far, it is unknown what has caused the flare-up, although we suspect it to be temporary. So, lower happiness and lower research. Fortunately, it's not a it's not a science planet yet. At some point, I do need to start doing mastery of nature. Um, there's a lot of worlds to do that on, and the big worry here is more the influence cost than anything. But due to a major clerical error on parts of uh, cleric, sorry, due to a major clerical error, parts of Nigel Prime have fallen behind in infrastructure maintenance and accommodation services. The people live in rather bleak conditions and will not tolerate it for long. Remedying these problems will cost us time and effort. We can say unfortunate, or we must invest in this area. Uh, the influence is really what uh, makes me feel the pain more. Um, but in this case, 500 energy is not a whole lot. And while it is a fifth of my influence, a thousand unity is not a bad trade-off, so I'll live with that. How's our terraforming coming along? Construction complete. Yeah, we've got a nice queue lined up, so this will give me some options for colonization over time. Uh, what else are we up to? So these guys are taking their sweet time getting to the base. Um... 
I think I'm gonna send the, uh, nope. I'm gonna send these guys back to Alvis to finish upgrading. With crime running running rampant on Glaboshi, the state of illegal narco uh, the sale of illegal narcotics has also increased to record levels. A wide variety of addictive drugs from all over known space is now being smuggled onto the planet. Drug use has become widespread among the population to the detriment of general productivity. This is no good. So again, we've got out of control uh, crime on Glaboshi. I just don't have a good way of dealing with it. I believe we said we were going to take out a Corvette to send to my my primary fleet construction finalized obviously i feel a bit like the grand old duke of york sending them up and down uh but in this in this case here i'm justifying it because i want my i mean this isn't even a full strength main force uh i just really want them to be uh i want them to have a fighting chance in terms of getting their their numbers back that's, I'm sure at some point I'll reevaluate re how I've built this. Um, well, you know, I've already got the two Titans Construction out. complete. This actually isn't as far off from what I would normally want anyway. System resources analyzed. Esteemed High Queen Murg I, a decade ago, the Akano High Kingdom pledged to support the Artisan Troop, and so you have. The time of your patronage is coming to an end, but we would be remiss not to ask. Would you care to renew your subscription to the finest arts and crafts in the galaxy? As always, it's a deal. So this is why I waited until we were at 20k uh, energy. Um, obviously, I don't want to find myself in a situation where these guys are, are knocking on my door Our and I don't have, the, don't have the money. Okay, habitability is up. Extensive study into different soil types and their ability to support crops will help improve the living conditions of our settlers on foreign worlds. So here I'm just going to go for the cheap options and Thrall World is the cheapest option. How you doing, Sun Gif? I told these guys to upgrade when I shouldn't have. I need to remove the Grand Herald first. Then we do the upgrades. It's kind of wasteful to just have this all sit waiting on the upgrades, but I'll live with it. Okay, so the main Grand Herald fleet. These guys get an upgrade. The rest of them should just be sitting... Sitting in orbit. And again, I'm just trying to take advantage of the current situation to... Um, to get my fleets in fighting shape. I think if I can if I can reasonably say that one of these is at full strength and the say the joint expeditionary fleet construction finalized is where they need to be in terms of like the counts. Um, I think then we'll make our effort on the howling vortex. The real challenge here is that the longer I wait on the terminal egress, um, the more likely it is somebody else will seize it. Okay, so we're short on housing. At some point, I do want to flip out the um, the luxury residences. Construction finalized. Actually, while I'm at it, Construction I have options. Finalized. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Because the clerk jobs will be taken up. All right, so Aculum's got its... Okay, so this is going to be defensive, so we'll set them up with gun battery and missile battery, as well as... No, hang on. I said the upgrade... Yeah, <laughs> the whole reason we weren't doing this was because we wanted to save on the upgrade costs. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, uh, 
This one's going to be a little trickier. So what I need to do is I, I'm, I'm planning for my future fleets in this case. So I've got one full one here, one full one here, and this one theoretically is already under construction. So the funny thing is I can't actually support a new fleet like this. Uh, I also think it's going to take me a really long time to build all of this. So... Um, I'm going to start with the four battleships. And we'll see, we'll see where the rest takes. I'm going to just build this uh, component by component. The reason I'm leaving some of these alloys in the background is... System resources analyzed. This is kind of tempting at the moment. Yeah, you know what? say never mind here at the moment. Change my mind. Old Alvania on the other hand. We'll get a bonus. Yeah, I think I'm going to build my new fleet in chunks and hopefully by then we'll have the technology that will give me cheap upgrades to the the bases I already have. And Tykia, I wouldn't normally have done... Oh, I can't, uh, because I've already got a hangar bay. Yeah, so we're just going to sit on our hands for the rest of this. At some point, I'm actually kind of tempted to give Tykia, um a second shipyard, even though I might wind up dismantling it. It's a tough call. Um, you're annoyed. A couple of acquaintances just went full teenage drama llamas on you. I'm sorry to hear that, Sungif. Is there anything, like, is it something you want to talk about? Or is it just you you would like a distraction in the form of some nerd talking about Stellaris? I'm happy to provide both. Okay, as much as I would prefer not to do things this way, um, we will get rid of the derelict. We're going to say, okay, you guys can move here, then you'll combine, enter orbit, and then upgrade. I'm assuming this won't be short, but... Holy smokes, I never would have expected us to uh, to get to the limit on consumer goods. Okay, well, let's say I am actually very tempted to do Mastery of Nature right now. Yes, I will. Uh, amenities and immigration bull. Okay, so... Instead of just so obviously I need to get my consumer goods dealt with, um, and one option that is available to me is um, uh, is to sell these. But what I actually would prefer to do, I'm going to find any place with negative migration, and I'm going to I'm going to distribute the goodies, and then I might eventually change that to. Um, any place with zero. But zero doesn't actually mean zero. Zero just means a number so small it doesn't report it. Okay, I think we are okay for now. Um, now, as far as the... As far as the crime is concerned, I do have some options available to me as well. So we can do an anti-crime campaign. Um, do we have enforcers, though? See, we don't have enforcers, so that's less... 
less good. Negotiate with the crime lords. Higher stability, but lower... Yeah, we're not doing that. Um, there was an option for martial law at some point. Yeah, so increases stability, adds more soldier jobs, but reduces uh, jobs, resources, and pop growth. But of course, the problem here is not stability. The problem here is crime. So we're going to hold off on that. And the world has been converted to a beautiful tundra world, which I'm sure is going to piss off everybody who's the wrong species, but who cares about them, right? Just irks you. Okay, I'm sorry to hear it nonetheless, but if you need a chat, we're... We're definitely here for you. One of the funny things is that I've obviously bent over backwards to try and get some of these uh, special abilities, and then I've proceeded to ignore them. So I'm trying to correct some of that in terms of um, sort of some decisions that I make down the road. Now, the way I think I'm going to handle this, um, I'm comfortable enough getting these guys to build on Kabji. I'm going to get these guys to snap up uh, some destroyers when the time comes. Um, the main focus here is going to be to get the upgrades done, although I Together, think the upgrades we'll won't happen until... Wait a minute, Elvis has actually done its construction queue? That's surprising. Okay, uh, through the creation of special slave breeding worlds, we can ensure that we will always have a steady supply of disposable laborers. So this one, I'm a little less inclined to designate some thrall worlds yet, but what I'm probably going to wind up doing at some point is looking for worlds that have large amounts of sort of farming or uh, minerals and essentially turn those into thrall worlds. The thing is, I think most of my worlds actually have some other desirable features and so I lose more by uh, by doing that specialization, but we'll see. Uh, okay, cheapest option is the fluid uh, fleet templates. That's obviously going to cost me in terms of um, in terms of my, uh, my plans because that's another 20 command points. That's really just enough for one more sort of block. Um, but I can live with that. We'll, we'll figure, we'll figure out a new pattern. Construction finalized. Okay. So Alvis has actually finished its, its work. Um, a little surprising, but not a bad state of affairs all told. So let's start with an upgrade. So get these guys to do an upgrade. System resources analyzed. Of course, once, progress attained. once everybody is upgraded, uh, the next step is going to be to sort of evaluate my current needs in terms of just sort of filling in the gaps for the fleets. And then we'll be back on track in terms of, um, of building new ships and replacement ships for uh, the fight in the Howling Vortex. Clearly, if... Um, Alvis has finished its construction queue and we have a surplus in terms of naval capacity I need to do uh, I need to build some more replacements so okay neutron launchers upgraded energy projectiles that rely on neutrons instead of protons for their I think explosive power I shouldn't have closed that so quickly so we can do dark matter exploitation we can get better gamma lasers plasma cannons I think in this case we'll go for the cheap option as as before and because we've had some tech, I just want to see... Okay, so the Astani... Well, they're my vassals, so I'm okay with them being pathetic. These guys are protected, I believe. Well, they're a member of the Favorable Pact, so presumably they're not going to be okay with me taking them on. Now, these guys, Jackley Intersolar... I had actually thought that they were protected... It seems I was wrong in assuming that, though. Um, so I could offer them protectorate status and then proceed to gobble them up. Yeah, this is a tra this is a really good example in terms of the trade-offs on trying to claim the Howling Vortex, because in one sense my fleets would be better suited to just run in and 
uh, and scoop these guys up as a as an acquisition. Not that I can actually. Oh, sorry, this is an important thing. I can't actually get to them yet. Um, I need the I need the um, Crodrox to let me back through the through their gates. So never mind. That wonderful plan is no more. We're gonna stick with uh, making more shooty. Okay, this is actually a decent pace for these upgrades. Against my better judgment, because I don't have anything else to do. Um, actually, maybe it's better for me to just wait for... Yeah, let's wait for these things to do their upgrades, and then we can... We can monkey around with the... Uh, the different um, compositions. Again, it'll change anyway. Um, I, I actually really Shoot, like the idea of the fleet manager. I just think the practice sometimes doesn't, uh, doesn't quite deliver. Okay, so these guys... Um, the original plan was going to be... Um, four battleships, eight cruisers, 19 destroyers, and 30... Eight Corvettes. So this would mean that I want seven more destroyers if I have them. I do. Um, we are definitely short on destroyers, though. So we'll prepare for the um, the switch. I have no idea why it says there should be eight. Oh, because I made a separate group. Uh, these guys are upgrading. Okay, so we'll just we're gonna let this Together sit we will build for now. A brighter future. All right, now we get to have some real fun. So the creation of dedicated naval engineering corps, uh, sorry, of a dedicated naval engineering corps will greatly benefit the construction of deep space defense platforms, decreasing building costs and increasing durability. So I'm going to go for synthetics here. Um, it is, of course, tempting to do things like advanced strike craft and whatnot, but synthetics is what's keeping me from doing this new tradition. So we're going to hold, hold fast on that. Now, rapid strike fleet. You can at least enter orbit. Um, right, we're going to kick out a Corvette. Um, I'm going to do this smallest to largest, so... How are we doing? 4K. I think I'm going to hold off on that for now because I know I'm going to be building a bunch of destroyers in a little bit. So this right now is just to get everybody sort of up to the um, uh, Starhold, is it? Oh yeah, it says right on top. So got one Star Fortress. Oh, uh, Tiaka also needs an upgrade. Okay, Grand Herald is done but needs more upgrades. So hopefully that will be fast. Actually looks like Aculum is probably going to finish their... Oh no, they're finishing their first set of battleships. They've got a way to go still. So the reason why I started on those battleships right away is that once we upgrade these ships, I'm going to have a lot of um, anchorages coming online. The Kenti have declared the Zathorians a threat. Now, unfortunately, we are in a defensive league with these guys. So if they if they start throwing their weight around too much, uh, I'm going to be in some trouble. I can't afford another terraform. Ships upgraded. 
Okay, so the Grand Herald is now properly ready for prime time. Well, okay, that's not 100% true. I should actually be building... Um, I should be building the remaining ships for this fleet, but aside from that, they're ready to go. Oh, actually, okay. I did say I was going to... So let's build this properly now. So we said we were going to do... Um, I think we said it was one Titan, two battleships. Um, yeah, you know what? I messed this up because I said, okay, so we had five and then we did three. So that'd be a Titan, battleships would be the main ones. Then we do two for the remainder. So that's six and then eight and then, okay, yeah. So effectively, I just hive off the battleships and turn those into Titans. So we would need eight cruisers which we currently don't have. Okay. Then 19 destroyers and 30... Oh, wow! Actually, we're really close to what that should be. Um, so, in this case, I'm just going to send along five more cruisers if we have them. And then we should be good to go. So who's not upgrading at the moment? Strategic readiness fleet. I'm now going to cannibalize you for parts. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. So we'll now send them down to the Grand Herald. And they should be up to up to scratch. I'll just double check that this number's right. Okay, so strategic readiness has got 39 points because it was the tactical response fleet that I wanted. Yes, they've got 20 points. We're good. Um, it is actually mildly tempting to take the Grand Herald and put it directly into the Howling Vortex, but... Um, we still have a bit of a wait. Although I think as much as it pains me to do this, I'm actually going to send the construction ship back because I have a feeling that we're going to be in a position to defend our claim in the Howling Vortex sooner than we think. All right, the Taikia system, that was the one where everybody was upgrading, so I'm okay holding off there. And the Zithorians and the Kenti hate each other. The good news, of course, is that I don't believe the Zithorians and the Kenti actually have any way of accessing each other either, so that's a small grace, I suppose. I feel like a bit of a bozo um, making this uh, construction ship sort of run all over the place. Okay. The third chamber. After a long and tiring search, a secret lever hidden under the floor was found which provided access to the fourth chamber. As before, alien glyphs adorn the wall above uh, yet another door. Those who wish to parlay with Zarklan must first find their way. There is, in each chamber, a hidden key that must be turned to proceed. The purpose of these challenges will soon be revealed. Remarkable. So here I can afford to convert another tomb world. Ships upgraded. Okay, this is a pretty important milestone for us. So I need to add a corvette. Ideally an experienced one, obviously. So I've got another full... Oh, you're kidding me. We still don't have enough. <laughs> okay, so apparently there's still... There are still upgrades that can be done. This is the Joint Expeditionary Fleet. I don't believe this number at all. I actually think all of this is a complete fabrication.
yeah, none of those none of those numbers make sense. Um, again, uh, Fleet Manager is a tool that I really wish I could use more, um, but it never quite, especially when I hit the reinforce all button and stuff like that, it never actually quite seems to have the intended effect. So this is sort of my reason for being such a micromanaging nutcase. Um, okay, so we're at 140. We'll throw it and upgrade at you first. Um, these guy, note this fleet. Seven destroyers. Oh, that's right. I was going to change the composition of this. I was going to change the composition of this fleet. Well, I guess we'll get the upgrades out of the way, but... I really am wasting time at this point. Maybe it's just because I'm scared of going against the... the Nanites. Construction complete. Okay, more star bases. We'll set them up for the next... the next job. That System probably doesn't make analyzed. sense the more I think of it, but I'm committed to it now. <laughs> I should probably build a crew quarters just to keep my costs down. Ships upgraded. Okay, there's no excuses now. These guys. We need to get rid of, I believe, a battleship. Just the one. And we need to get rid of one of the cruisers. And then exchange, we get seven, seven destroyers. Wrong one. Okay, so they're at full capacity. We're now gonna send them to the Howling Vortex. These guys should probably be finishing upgrades. Yes, they've actually finished their upgrades as well. So we're also going to send them to the Howling Vortex. And their reinforcements will come in and falling are. So, okay, so we've, we're at the point now we've got two full strength. Uh, we've got two full strength fleets ready to go in the Howling Vortex. The next step now is going to be to sort of re rebuild the um or well i guess build uh it's technically rebuilding the strategic readiness fleet um but in practical terms um build sort of my third main fleet now we've already got a little bit of the development happening here the first stellar fleet is actually going to wind up becoming um sort of my fourth fleet but while we're at it Strategic Readiness Fleet is currently sitting at four battleships. I'm going to want six more cruisers, a ton of destroyers, as well as corvettes. So, again, against my better judgment, we're just going to lock in the numbers on this. All right. So I'm assuming we'll at least be able to get the cruisers done. I might be wrong, though. Cool. Uh, how lucky am I feeling about the destroyers? Okay, so I've got eight. Not that I'm going to keep track. I mean, I'm, I'm probably just going to look at where we're sitting when Elvis finishes its construction queue, but... Now, of course, the drawback is, is that for all the construction that I'm doing right now, um, I'm going to have a bunch of these ships come online. Kenti have established a new branch office. I can live with that. Um, yeah, so the drawback here is that uh, I'm also going to have some costs in terms of upgrading my... Uh, my star bases, which are actually a fairly high priority right now because that's an example of where I've lagged on my development and as a result uh, I'm going to be paying for it, especially in terms of kind of being able to 
aggressively pursue my... Complete. Interesting. I hope they vanish without a trace. I am mildly concerned about the Kenti being able to take that. System resources analyzed. So here we're going to build a star base because we're going to be we're at this point we're going to be moving in there permanently. Construction, construction ships make me sad. Okay, old Alvania seems to be in kind of on decent ground. Oh, that's right, because we expanded the we expanded the world. Um, let's sell off the surplus as always. All right, I got to make some decisions in terms. Of, okay, so crime's coming down at a nice rate. Um, that makes me reasonably happy. Tiber. Tiber is always going to be a problem because essentially I'm going to want to use them to just continue generating these special resources. I think exotic gases is the way to go just because technology is such a big advantage. Um, but that's only going to be good for one job. So we'll get three more. So we've got four. Um, we'll knock out some generator districts just because I can. Okay, oh cool, um, running out of living space. So we'll start with that. So that'll be two jobs. Now we wanna move up to three. So in this case, I think just upgrading the one of the science buildings uh, will take care of that. Um, harder for me to argue that this is a world that needs a an energy grid or a I mean, it's hard to argue it needs anything but more research labs. I can't really justify robot assembly plants because I don't have any use for them here. Um, I would be willing to do um, like a stronghold and a military academy. Okay, Afris, let's get these guys on the right track. Now I'm eventually going to have to start using the the slots I have available. So we do have a shortfall, but we also need more living space. So we'll add another another building. That still doesn't answer what I want to do with this slot here, though. So we've got a military academy. We've got a stronghold. I mean, decent trade, so it wouldn't hurt to have a stock exchange, I suppose. Um, Slave processing facility doesn't make that much sense. I can, of course, start building resource silos as well. Um, I think for lack of a better option, we'll start building some stock exchanges. I'm kind of happy to see crime starting to get tamed, but it's likely going to take us a while. So bigger question is, does the Kenti, or sorry, the Akano, do they hold one of the L gate? If they hold one of the L gates, I want to be worried. And if they don't hold one of the L gates, I am less concerned that they're going to ninja it from me. The one thing that those science ships might be doing, though, is attracting some of the defensive units. Okay, so they're done their battleships in a little bit. This is a tough call because I do want to be... I kind of want to be focusing on one big fleet at a time, especially with my resources so low. So let's just take a quick minute here on Alvis. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight destroyers in the queue. And we have got... Okay, so I need ten more destroyers. So we're going to queue up ten more destroyers and then... Um, Okay, so six more destroyers after that. Uh, then we'll start considering 
um, building back an aculum. In this case, I just really can't justify um, sort of two, two large fleet projects. Where's that construction ship? Nope, oh, they're on their way. So this is a point where I would be willing to start moving people in. Okay, Antak has been transformed into an Alpine world. I'm not... I, I want to actually establish myself in the Elgate cluster before I... Construction finalized. Hello! <laughs> So this was just all the system upgrades. This, um, I'd love to do some stuff about, but I think I'm a little light on the alloys at the moment. Construction finalized. Construction yeah. finalized. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we're going to finish the construction of the additional fleet. Uh, we're going to finish the one at Old Alvania first. Then we'll consider finishing the one in Aculum. Scientific progress attained. Okay, boost to command limit. Um, I'm not going to take advantage of that right now, but I am going to need to reconsider my new fleet designs. And wow, quite a few options. Um... Say in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's do the Armada battle formation just so that we can get all of my adjustments out of the way in one go. Okay, Sosta needs some work. This might maybe one day become sort of a food-like planet. Um, but for now, I think I'm going to continue this policy of colony in a box. Scientific so they get progress an alloy foundry. And alloy foundry will give them two jobs. Give them two more clerk jobs, complete. and then we'll give them some farms too. Okay, dark matter drawing. This exotic substance has many properties that seemingly defy the laws of physics. Harvestable concentrations can be found only near black holes or in certain nebulas. So this has really just been more about cleaning up some of the, the loose ends. I'm not quite ready to start getting the danger techs, so we'll do the arc emitters for now. Construction complete. Now, one of the things I'm a little tempted to do here is to take my unmanned science ship and send that through the gateway first, and then my then my fleets. Um, but I feel like that's guaranteeing a loss when I know my fleets are sort of strong enough to handle handle themselves. Okay, now this is a tough call. What do I want to do with this world right now? This is this would actually be a really good candidate for a Thrall world. Um, I think for now we're going to crank out some more mining districts. But I'm also going to take this opportunity to... send them to the planet that's misbehaving. And again, the hope here is just to start smacking down the, the crime a bit. Do I have enforcers working yet? They do. We're a bit light on influence, though. Ah, eh, we'll do it. Construction finalized. Okay, Afris needs more bureaucracy. So we'll start with that. Uh, bureaucratic complex is going to give two jobs. We have... So we'll have three available. We want one more. So in this case, we're just going to go for more generator districts. Not because it's efficient. It's more just because I can. Okay, now, my forge world. Uh, we've already got productivity improvements. I'm mildly tempted to just upgrade this forge. Yes, I will. That still doesn't answer what I want to do with this slot, though, so let's think about it. Um, we've already got the Batharian fields complete. being worked. 
Not really enough trade to justify anything like a stock exchange or anything like that, although I might be able to swing something like a military academy. Um, for the time being, I think I'm going to lock in another alloy world, and then we can consider some of the, the fancier options. Ceridon's going to need some employment in a little bit. So let's say... Construction what are complete. we looking at here? We do have enough exotic gases to upgrade one of our science labs. So we'll start with that. Um... don't really need more food right now, but I think I'm going to use this as an opportunity for one of these um, robot worlds. And Mublar, not currently producing alloys. Petria! Um... I'm not really going to do anything with this empty slot until the crime and the uh, the jobs are down because if I wind up complete. if I wind up doing something special with that world. Oh. I was ignoring or was that Craxima? Okay. So I've been ignoring the story in the Howling Vortex for a bit. It looks like my cruisers are arriving just in time. So let's get them to join the Grand Herald. Looks like my other... F okay. New drug introduced on Glaboshi. Smugglers on Glaboshi have introduced a new drug that we believe originated from somewhere in the pirate territories beyond civilized space. This drug is not only highly addictive, but is also proven quite lethal to most life forms if consumed in anything but small quantities. While local authorities are doing what they can to stem the spread of this drug, there's been a rash of deaths all over the planet. Four pops die. Hopefully none of them were a Kano. Oh, looks like one of the enforcers was. <laughs> one of the enforcers was getting into it. Uh, Jesus. Sure would be nice if they'd work the enforcer jobs, because, um, yeah, this is a problem. I think in this case we're going to knock out the medical workers, we'll knock out the... Okay, we've got three enforcers, I'm happy with that. Um, so we'll say, okay, one more medical... Nope, okay, no more medical workers, not until you know how to control yourselves. Um, let's see what that does. Crime solved! <laughs> All right, we're going to wait a little while. Um, actually, I wonder if I can reduce one of the jobs. Okay, crime goes back up, so. Let's say full enforcers. Um, Damn it. Okay, three enforcers, I'm happy. Once we, um, once the anti crime, uh, once the center of drug trade and all of that is finished, we can, we can consider making the adjustments. All right, Elor 3A. Now that's a size three planet, so I think we're definitely getting at the point here where I want to start colonizing some of these things. Uh, Glamnum. So the best option that I see, or maybe I think there's an expansion planner, yeah. So let's just sort this by size. The ideal candidates are of course planets that I don't currently have. Okay, cool. So Lessim and 
Let's get him. Okay, so this is obviously the resort, and this is the... Oh man, this has got so much energy though. Okay, well, we're obviously going to... Um, it's not Tundra, but it's 100% uh, colonizable, so... I'm just going to get these obvious candidates out of the way. This is probably going to come back to... By, oh, wait a minute, hang on. Yeah, no, Alpine is what I want. Um, oh, I remember why I wasn't doing this. It's because um, Antac and Osganum are... Now, you know what? This is going to be my statement of confidence in our ability to... Uh, and our ability to establish a presence. Okay, I think I said I owed six destroyers. Let's just double check. So we're building, say one, two, three, five, six. It's got 13. Construction finalized. Yeah, so I need six more. Construction finalized. Okay, that's done. Uh, next up is a boatload of Corvettes. So we want 38. We currently have 10, so 28. <laughs> 25. Good news, though, is once that's done, uh, we will have a third fleet. complete. Has the backup arrived yet? They have. All right. <sighs> I may really come to regret this. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Uh, it is, however, concerning that these guys are getting some exploration in. So, science ship. I think I'll hire a new explorer on this one. Um, I was resisting it for a while, but we're flush at the moment, so... And we'll give you... Maniacal is actually kind of tempting in this case. Um, so yeah, clearly my worry here is we might get caught. Um, but the the plan is the plan is the same as it's always been. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cover. Uh, no. I'm going to cover all the scary stuff. By scary stuff, I mean stuff that's near where... Um, enemy fleets might show up. This is not an efficient path, but I'm not trying to do an efficient path. I'm trying to do one that keeps me away from the bad guys. And actually, at that point, I think I would be comfortable saying... Ugh. I actually did it in the wrong, the wrong pattern. You know what? This is stupid.
Okay, we're already over the fleet cap, which is a small concern. Construction um, what I'm going to do in preparation of the fact that the bad guys are also trying to get this territory, I'm going to take my construction ship and we're going to move them to the terminal egress. Danger, of course, is that they get blown up. But I have a feeling it's going to be a bit of a rush. Um, now, at some point, I'm going to need to deal with this naval cap. So, um, they say 25. Fourth chamber. This time the lever was concealed in the roof. The fifth chamber has more alien writing. There is none. The challenges are as meaningless as these words. That is my lesson. I am Zarklan, the pawn, swept along by the currents of history against my will. Proceed and an audience shall be yours, should one still be of interest. The next chamber will likely be your last. <laughs> Astounding. All right, let's just make sure that I can't spend uh, any of my relics on fancy things. Looks like old Alvania needs... Okay, well, <laughs> I know where you guys are going. Um, to the trouble planet. I'll admit, I think uh, the fact that I lost my nerve probably means I'm more likely than not to uh, to lose this system. But we'll see. Construction finalized. I did have an opportunity to reverse engineer some uh, some of the tech, which I didn't take as well. The one thing I really want to be worried about is if one of these science ships starts going off into the other regions. And Nanites mining station in orbit uh, to acquire them. I don't have what it takes. All right, so this colony is ready for an autothon monument. That has got to be the bad guy showing Construction up. Finalized. Like the the Nanites, I mean. Oh no, that's, that's the other bad guys. Okay, so let's. I'm just going to take a quick minute here to audit um, potential rivals for these L gates. Yes, I mean, they're all exploring it. Um, but there seem to be very few people actually in a position to claim it. It actually. Oh, God, the Zathorians. The Zathorians might actually be my... They might be the ones to scoop me on this. That would be the worst possible outcome. Construction complete. I almost kind of want to make a second science ship just to make sure that doesn't Construction happen. Construction complete. Yeah, so it looks like those guys are already heading back. Finalized. Maculum was doing what? Uh, looks. Oh, they were building colony ships. Construction finalized. Okay, I gotta figure out my corvettes again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a fleet that needs... Okay, we've got 17. 
Do I really just have 17 already? That's kind of gross. Okay, that means I need 21 more of these. It's going to be expensive. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. I know I can buy more alloys if it comes down to it, but it'd be nice to put the money towards terraforming instead. Scientific progress attained. Okay, so we've got nine more orders. Mm. Highly advanced robots uh, that are stronger, faster, and more durable than the vast majority of organics. With their upgraded neural processors, they are fully capable of independent operations. Okay, so we can get some speed in terms of developing our fleets. Uh, that's the cheapest. No, the district housing is cheapest, and it's actually my better option right now. So... Uh, but for Ascension perks, nonsense. Ah, uh, we need Synthetic Personality Matrix as well. Fair enough. Let's hope I can do this in turn. Limbo Technological Advances. Following the recent advancements in the field of robotics, the scientific community of old Alvania is confident that we can produce synthetic bodies sophisticated enough to support a higher neurological consciousness. We could try to upload the neural patterns that were recovered from the alien vault discovered some time ago into robots and bring the aliens back to life. It's worth a try. Sith log updated. Should probably just do all of these. Won't take us that long. Again, I'm particularly sensitive to any construction ships showing up. After many trials and setbacks, the engineering department has finally managed to transfer the extinct aliens' neural scans to robotic bodies, and the results are exhilarating. The ancient aliens have fully rejoined, uh, regained consciousness and have expressed desire to join our empire, offering to colonize a new planet within our borders. So, we would be honored. And in the meantime, we'll sell off the the minerals. Zip here three apparently. Ah, this is because <laughs> they just showed up. All right. Um, let's. Ah, okay. I don't have a way of getting rid of those. Um, This is one of those size 13... Right. I think I'm going to wait a little while on this. Um, I'm st I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to think of where my uh, penal colony and where my resort worlds are going to are gonna go, but I don't think I'm in a... I don't think I'm in a good spot to do that yet. Okay, we need more bureaucracy, and these ones were left empty for a reason. It's a little bit of a kick in the nuts that they... Uh, they colonize the world and then give you un unemployment almost immediately. Okay. Again, the worry being that there's a construction ship. Uh, I think we're like six more, seven more. We're definitely Special behind on the science. Um, we're definitely behind on that science race, but it's not yet become a point where we need to panic. <clears throat> The Void Clards are, as far as the Kano researchers can tell, among the oldest entities in the universe. They seem to have originated just a scant few billion years after matter as we know it first appeared. The tremendous forces of the young cosmos uh, making something out of nothing. They would have been stars once, but were not. Explaining their apparent animal intelligence is more difficult, but the answer might lie in the abnormally strong electromagnetic fields that keep them together, another product of their primordial beginnings. It is not inconceivable that, given enough time, the circulation of this strange stardust and gravitic fields aligned in a flexible approximation of neural pathways. Moreover, the clouds seem to be receiving impulses from one another, if not outright communicating, light years apart. Quantum entanglement is expected to play a role in this phenomenon. So we can say they will not stand in our way, 33% uh, extra damage, or humbling 
oh god yeah uh 10 physics research um at this point because 662 is coming from 10 this we're basically saying 33 percent damage to something that we can already take out or uh basically 60 extra research let's make sure that that number is right but we say 662 to uh, 27 right now construction complete uh, we'll find out in a month it's really not much here the next aim is going to be to um, yep uh, the next aim is going to be to find the place where we can shut down the uh, the nanotech. I believe we are still... Yeah, victory is not currently possible because of an ongoing crisis. I am curious how we are ranking now. So surprisingly, it looks like multiple players have now eclipsed some of the... Um, some of the uh, the fallen empires. Now this is again because of the Federation. So the Zithorians get 8,000 for that. As far as tech is concerned, okay, we've equipped the Zithorians. Uh, we're laughing at the Akano, the commune. Okay, so the Sandrithians are still, still ahead of us. Which means I'm just going to invest even more in tech. <laughs> but we'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I am happy it's been somewhat sleepy to try and, uh, try and, oh wow, I was not expecting that. So it looks like there's two locations that the Sundrithians are actually trying to, trying to claim territory in. But yeah, like I said, I'm I'm actually not too upset that it's been kind of sleepy to um, uh, to try and claim the terminal egress because it means that I'm able to make myself stronger in other regards. All right, so I hate the fact that I've had to do this counting over and over and over again. But we're at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Ah, one, one away. Okay, we'll wait till the month turns over. Thirty-eight. So that'll put us well over the cap. This is why we're starting to see some reductions in terms of our other income, but that is an investment I'm willing to make, especially because we know we're going to recover that as soon as we start upgrading some of our star bases, which is actually, it's something I would be willing to do uh, right away, but I've, I've been neglecting my existing, um, my existing infrastructure. I do need to make sure that I have enough money set aside to... Um, Need to make sure I have enough money set aside to be able to, um, sorry, words fail me. Um, I need to be able to have enough money set aside to be able to build the, uh, sort of the defensive platforms at the terminal, e or not even the defensive platforms, but just ba basically to build the first base and terminal egress. Uh, the rest of it, of course, is just a matter of trying to find where the bad guys are located. <laughs> Um, yeah, right now what I want to do is just want to get my science ship to peek into, 
peek into some different locations analyzed. and uh, see if we can de detect that signal that we need to take out. I have a powerful System urge to go to the bathroom, analyzed. but I also know I'm getting kind of close to the broken. finish of the, the cast. Oh, here we go. The agreement that we signed giving you access to our databanks has run its course. Would you like to extend it for another 10 standard years, or do your researchers no longer require the information that we offer? In this case, we'll extend the deal. Excellent. Our databanks shall remain available to your scientists. I'm not going to spend money on terraforming quite yet because I know that the rate of... Um, I know the rate at which I gain energy is going to fall over the next little while. Um, so what I want to do is just make sure I have a little bit more of a reserve than I do. I know I have 10 years to, to have that deal come back. Um, but at this point, I'm going to just hold back and um, make sure that I have enough to cover me. Uh, because we're going to be, we're still going to be building more ships, not less. And so our costs for maintaining the Navy is, is going, to, going to adjust accordingly. The ability to alter a planet's weather patterns to suppress destructive weather phenomena will make residential buildings easier to maintain and open up new areas for habitation. Okay. Um, wow. Okay, so we can System still put more points into analyzed. district housing. In this case, I'm going to go for the quantum missiles just because it's something that lets me shoot things. Has the system... Okay, are we able to... Yes, we are. Okay, so we just... we We won the uh we won that race which is good okay so let's see what happens when they get under attack oh that sucks Science vessel lost. I was originally going to say, ah, I don't need a scientist in there, but they really did. Okay. I'm going to throw that to the top of the queue. No, oh, come on. So, of course, we know what's coming. Um... I definitely need to make sure that I defend. Oh, crap. Okay, I did not realize everyone was going to be going in there. This is going to get... Hostile reactionaries engaged. So we just took on three fleets like that. Which one is this? This is the Grand Herald. Um... There are three motherships. Okay. We'll see what happens, but this this could actually turn this could turn against me really quick. As long as the Grand Herald is alive. <laughs> To my oh, here we go. Oh wow, the Grand Hill is actually taking some serious damage here. This is potentially one where I'm willing to do a retreat. The problem is, is if I retreat, we're almost certainly going to lose that base. Oh man, the Grand Herald's just getting shredded here. But we're also so close to taking this out. Um, okay, the Grand Herald escaped, so that's good news there. 
Um, yeah, it's just this this third full strength interdic interdictor group. System resources. That's gonna. I think that's gonna make the difference. But let's let's see if we can let's see if we can make it work. At the very least, if I can get my toehold in, and. Uh, Once, once these Corvettes are done, I think we're going to move these guys in immediately. Like, the great thing is, is that if I can actually pull this off, if I can somehow get my f one of my fleets to survive this... Oh no, man, that's a fresh... Yeah, that's a fresh group that's going to come and destroy them. That's, that's not going to work at all. Um... What are we looking at here? Um, we'll do what we can on this one. Okay. Um, but these are these are like fresh fleets, so. Uh, Admiral Osh Nasibin ran the engines of his ships to their limits when the joint expeditionary fleet disengaged from the recent battle in the Zir system. He has learned to squeeze extra speed out of the ships under his command. Good. So. Let's see what the cost was, because all of that's going right back into the shipyards. Unfortunately, I think in my ambition, I, uh, I just created the circumstances under which we're going to lose our beachhead. Okay, so one battleship, five cruiser, 14 corvettes, wow. Oh, sorry, I thought those were destroyers. Never mind, that's not so bad. Six destroyers. Um, two destroyers. 13 Corv. I mean, the Joint Expeditionary Fleet didn't lose too much there. Uh, what shocks me, though, apparently they didn't lose anything out of that. I don't actually believe those numbers. Unfortunately, I think these guys are going to be coming through Zier, and it will not matter that we won won the race to terminal egress. Construction complete. Okay, um, encouraging. Let's start by doing the upgrades immediately and get as many defensive platforms as we possibly can down. Okay, moving on. Moving up next, um, let's get the... So I'm going to go a little bold on this and sell 10,000 minerals. And I'm going to buy 5,000 worth of alloys. A little bit more than that, actually. Well, at least we're back into our, our limit. Um, so I think I'm going to get the most expensive uh, replacements built first. So here we want... We've actually already built spare battleships, but... Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. Okay, one battleship. Um, looks like nine cruisers. Really? Wow. Hostile reactionaries detected. God damn it. I gotta get the... Um, we gotta get this guy out of here. Um, to the Howling Vortex. Oh, Jesus. They're, like, they're completely ignoring this. Hey, the Isisin. How you doing? 
You know what? The smarter move is not to engage at all. Actually... <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, Construction finalized. This isn't as scary as it looks, because it's just one mothership and... Discourse seeding in progress. It's the mothership and their... Um, their escort. Um... God, this is going to be... There have to be a lot of things that break my way to make this work. But it is also not outside the realm of possibility that it will. So again, we just need to pound out as many Corvettes as we can. And I need, I need to get a presence in that system as soon as possible. This is my science ship being built. I think we'll get that science ship and put it in the uh, Obatellus system. Astonishing. Okay, so the raiders actually pulled it off. Construction complete. Okay, that's bought me some time. Um, but we're definitely not out of the woods because I'm going to need to get this full fleet. Are you up to 40? Ah, oh, damn it. Establishing means of production. Okay. Uh, it's a reach. Oh, apparently these count as being... Ex I'm a little surprised that these count as being explored, to be completely honest. Um, I don't think I want to build any infrastructure here yet. I think I actually just want to... I think I just want to go home. Uh, let's get them to finally rebuild on Kabji. That mission I've kept uh, Our research has off. progressed. Okay, new fleet command limit. I am eventually going to have to deal with that, but... Um, Soil remediation is very cheap right now. Sure. Okay, we get these guys back in four, ooh, four months is going to be a struggle. Um, I clearly do not have the capacity to support um, the construction of an additional fleet here. So I'm going to incorporate these battleships into sort of a new fleet. Um, and we're actually making some decent progress on bringing order to this part of the galaxy. So that's an unexpected benefit. Uh, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. Uh, that's kind of an unexpected benefit of chugging away at this. Um... Yeah, whether or not we're actually able to turn these... Whether or not I'm able to get these um, fleets back to full strength is, a, is an open question. Because the other thing is, is that I, I want to be able to... I want to be able to turn this into a strong point. So in 124 days, I want to start building defensive platforms where I can. Um, and again, the answer is sort of just to, to empty out the treasuries of everything that we can and just uh, use as many alloys as possible. But as is, you know, as is always the case, um, I've got competing priorities. I want to rebuild my fleets as well as um, as well as uh, 
get that defensive position up. So in this case, we're going to continue focusing on cruisers. The main reason I'm starting with battleships and cruisers is they take the longest to make. Um, so they are a fairly high priority right now. I want those... Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? This is a... Uh, I'm, I'm playing with fire here, but I'm actually going to take all of my surpluses and I'm going to knock them down. All right. Um, I am not going to touch this stockpile until Alvis is idle on one of its shipyards. System resources analyzed. The big problem with this. Oh, actually, I can build defensive platforms already. So, um, yeah, the big challenge with this one here is I could just be setting this up for. Uh, destruction. So, powerful weapons that launch lightning arcs of chaotic energy at targets, which in part can ignore their armor and shields. Okay. Gamma laser it is. Um, that doesn't sound good. Okay. Um, I also want to make sure that I can make use of my relics. And I also add unemployment on El Oh, I've actually got a bit of unemployment. No, don't prioritize. Um, okay, well, we'll send them to the Trouble Planet as we usually do. Paradia. It's been a while since I've seen them. Uh, they're actually going to need some more work sooner rather than later. Um, it's an easy choice. Uh, my tech world is another question. Um, I think in this case I can afford to give them like a stronghold. Or maybe a robot assembly plant. I think I'm going to try this robot assembly plant thing. Because I also think we're at a point where we're actually going to be getting some benefits from uh, robot workers, I believe, can do more complicated tasks. And I suppose I technically don't need to be worrying about... Oh, damn it. Uh, I don't like that. Establishing means of production. Anyway, um, so this is kind of sacrosanct until. Um, until I get some more cruisers, sort of, uh, or basically until one of these things uh, falls out of um, out of use, uh, I'm just going to slowly be ticking up the number of cruisers that I build until we're on path to replacing the lost ones. What I'll probably do is I'll cannibalize one fleet and um, build all the replacements. Like the Grand Herald will kind of get all of the replacements, and then we'll move. We'll sort of move up. Um, but as always, uh, I want to also make sure that I'm in a position to defend myself. I would have a couple things that I'm going to do here to try and make things. Ugh, every time I hear something come through the through come through hyperspace, it makes me worry. The process of soil uh, deposition normally takes millions of years. With advanced fracking, chemical engineering, and hydraulic management technologies, even the poorest substrate can be turned into a fertile topsoil. Okay, I can get another Ascension perk, but I think it's a little early to be thinking about that right now. Um, so let's go for... I'll do the food one, mostly because food is something I can sell. Okay, so in 13 days we're going to start putting some points into... other modules. 
Okay, so defense, obviously. Um, and I actually want to build a crew quarters here first. And that's just because being able to station my fleets is my highest priority at the moment. We are going to be doing more uh, defensive-oriented uh, buildings in a little bit. Are these guys at full capacity yet? Oh, these are my these are my lost fleets. Okay, so clearly you guys need to heal up. While we're at it, let's just... Okay, so... Battleship out. Um, okay, all the cruisers. Uh, six destroyers, was it? Just want to double check my notes. Yeah, six destroyers and 14 corvettes. And... Clearly the Grand Herald needs the top admiral. Uh, okay, but I have a full... I hope I have a full strength. Okay, so clearly the full strength can go uh, into this strategic readiness fleet. So Grand Herald is back to... back where they need to be. Maka, how are you getting so many minerals and alloys? I'm building them. Um, so the majority of my um, mineral extraction is actually coming from stations, believe it or not. I do have a fairly healthy economy, and that's just because I have a lot of worlds that are... Um, I have a lot of worlds that have that as a primary resource, so it's natural to specialize on that. I'm, I'm following this reasoning that even though they're raw materials and they're not good for export, they're not worth as much, it still makes sense to do it um, because... You know, I, I might as well generate a lot of something that I'm good at than trying to generate, um, you know, something a little bit more balanced. Um, now, as far as alloys are concerned, I still don't think I'm generating enough. But as you can see here, like this is just purely me making forge worlds and trying to prioritize uh, alloy production where I can. Um, although whether or not, you know, whether or not I'm successful in doing so is another question. Discourse seeding in progress. I'm a little worried about putting a military fleet in the terminal egress. But I suppose that's where... That's the easiest place for them to repair. Ah, goddammit. They are going to wreck this place. And I don't think there's much I can do about that. Um... I'm going to move a construction ship in position. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to move them close to the Howling Vortex. Hopefully we can recover this, but it's definitely going to be... I don't see any, I don't see any situation where we, where the, um, the starport survives, to be honest. Also, maybe I shouldn't throw my... Ah, yes, okay. It is very sensibly moving elsewhere. Starbase under assault. Ah, boy. Yeah, that's, that's me losing my starbase. Our research has progressed. <laughs> Okay, 
quantum missiles, the uh, latest version of space to space, the space space, ah, these, the latest version of space to space missile. This upgraded variant has an immensely powerful warhead that draws its energy from a zero point vacuum. Okay, um, I've put it up, put it off long enough. Uh, I think I'm just going to have to admit mineral cutting beams is my best option. I haven't been using the nan uh, an equivalent to the nanite transmuter already. So we'll get that out of the way. And looks like they are targeting... Yeah. Construction complete. Okay, so I want these guys back in the Howling Vortex. I want the Grand Herald on its way as well. It might make sense to have the two of them combined. And if we get an opportunity to do so, um, I am going to... Basically, we're just going to park the fleets in the base. In progress. Of course, the drawback here is we lost a bunch of alloys uh, doing that. So in the meantime, on Alvis, I did say I was going to... I need to spend the money. Ah, uh, god damn it. I've forgotten... Okay. Better thing for me to do is just build the template again. Uh, so, four battleships. Eight cruisers. Nineteen destroyers. Thirty-eight corvettes. Okay, so clearly we need uh, seven more cruisers. Let's start with the seven cruisers because those are going to be expensive. So six cruisers. Okay. So two more in the future. I'm curious where I'm putting those battleships. Okay, they are on their way to the Howling Vortex, so... I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take everything and base it in uh, Fallingar. Oh, come on. Uh, just the reason for doing so is... There's already a hostile... Um, there's already a hostile ship in the terminal egress. System so, I mean, it's unlucky if the it's unlucky if the bad guys get to take the terminal egress again. But in this case, we might as well go present a unified front, get the defensive position built up. That'll, of course, also give us an opportunity to build some uh, to rebuild our fleets, and then um, we can sort of take it and then more logically move on. Okay. After a grueling search, the last key was discovered in the form of a minuscule button hidden in one of the carved alien glyphs. In the last chamber, a gigantic throne holds the slumped and motionless form of a large humanoid figure. A horrible smell hints at the decayed state of the being's body. Some glyphs at the bottom of the throne read simply, Zarklan, at your service. The body is too far gone to be moved, but the head is surprisingly well preserved given its age. Not wanting to leave empty handed, some archaeolo archaeologists use a laser cutter to remove the head. Relic found, head of Zarklan, 20 minor artifacts found. Incoming transmission from the Pelesimus Watches. It, it is true then. You found the legendary tomb of Zarklan. When the Augurs told me, I did not believe them, but the evidence is irrefutable. I understand that you have the Prophet's head in your possession. Then, as was foretold, the chosen of the great Zarklan have at last been revealed. As would have been Zarklan's wish, any unsettled holy worlds near our space are yours to do with as you wish. There are also many devout pilgrims on the celestial throne who would be greatly honored to fight under your banner. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Uh, this, this might have just gotten really good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, chosen of Zarklan modifier added, giving the following effect. Spiritualist ethics attract. Oh, god damn it, I don't want spiritualists. Okay. 
<laughs> no, seriously though, where are my mercenaries? Okay, that was that was obviously. I mean, that was a fun one on its own. Um, but obviously, a a big finish like that is um, it is a good thing. I'm okay with this plan for now. So I am past my uh, my usual finishing time, but I really want to see if I can put a cap on this uh, on this uh, you know this tale of the howling vortex and whether or not we can establish our establish ourselves. So um, what are we looking at here? We've currently got one, two, three, four, five, six cruisers under construction. We needed seven, so. Got one more of those. Now we need eight destroyers. Six destroyers. Uh, Nafgravas, we don't need anything yet. And Glavashi has always been one that we've ignored. Okay, Zipper 3A, we can... And eh, we might as well. I can afford it. Paradia needs bureaucracy. They also need robots, but bureaucracy first. Okay, well we only have one option for traditions at this point, so diplomacy. The surest way to destroy your enemies is to make them your friends. Uh, adoption effect, diplomatic influence cost reduced by 50%, and pop growth from immigration increased by 10%. Um, we'll start with that. Uh, looking forward, so I don't really see a federation in my future, but 10% bonus to trade value seems decent. Market fee reduction, oh, market fee reduction is huge. Uh, we'll be getting more for our purchases. And then I suppose the base trade protection would be kind of nice, but we've obviously abandoned our efforts to improve our, uh, our star bases because I made the rather foolish decision to try and, uh, to try and push my claim a little bit harder than I should have. And I think at this point I am willing to... Uh, I just want to double check that my construction ships aren't too idle. Um, I think at this point I am willing to speed things up for the time being. Just to get everybody at Falingar. The strategic readiness fleet is close. Um, the Grand Herald will be bringing up the rear, but... The hope, of course... Together the... we will build a brighter future. Okay, 10% bonus to mining out station output. Um, I believe that will also help with energy, but... It doesn't quite make sense because it says mineral cutting beams, but... I believe energy does count as a as a mining station. These powerful short-range lasers can easily slice through rock, making the extraction of minerals a more efficient affair. So we'll see. We're at 335 right now. Um, looks like I'm going to be doing this infrastructure. It's going to be infrastructure uh, century. Construction finalized. Okay. I do kind of want to make sure that my expansion is on track. Actually, you know what? I think I need another ship claiming these areas. Okay, so I want to see how much this changes. If it goes up by about 30, eh, inconclusive, but it's, it's looking like that was... That was a side effect of it. Uh, Mintaka. Okay, I do actually need to figure out what I'm doing with this world. So we're already, we've already got the robot assembly. Looks like we do have a bit of a crime problem here. Um, I will admit I'm a little surprised by this. Possibly due to the population, I'm not sure. Um, but more important question, what do I want to do with this world? Clearly we've got all that we can out of the mining. 
Um, more alloys seems manageable. Um, but I think a little bit more importantly, I have not been building research labs on the worlds. So just because I have dedicated research worlds doesn't mean that I want to ignore research altogether. Um, this world's a little more pacified, so I'm okay with that now. Yeah, so I think I need to start building some more research labs. In I mean, obviously the benefits of all these tech worlds should be apparent, um, but that doesn't mean that I should ignore um, ignore that development. System resources analyzed. Okay, so the Ketling Star Pact is not. I mean, they're not gonna. They're not gonna be the difference, but I might as well... I mean, they're a ship that I own, so I might as well bring them into the fray. Um, okay, decision time on my industrial world. I think we've got more than enough rare crystals, so let's say upgrade for that. I don't think I have any more special buildings to build here. Um, oh, uh, okay, no, galactic stock exchange has already been built. Uh, yeah, there's also no real argument for slaves or anything like that. Um, it's kind of hard to argue for a research institute here. Um, but I would not be opposed to something to improve the energy output. Nope, already got one of those too. Uh, crap, okay. Um, the Dimensional Fabricator isn't terrible, but we've actually done rather well in terms of securing the resources that we need. So I think I'm going to leave this open for now. Again, we're just going to fast forward to the point where we're able to retake the Howling Vortex. And I think we're at a point here where we can just move the battleships in. We'll maybe move the strategic readiness. I think, yeah. I'm a little uncomfortable with the way that I'm, I'm moving them in piecemeal, but... It shouldn't be... Too... I'm pretty sure any one of these fleets on their own could hold their own. System resources analyzed. And it hasn't turned a, a foreign color, so I'm happy there. Okay, more important question. Is Alvis... Alvis is not currently idle. Um, but I do want to see if I can get a little extra space. Okay, so we're up to 13 in terms of destroyers, it looks like. So currently 11. We're building two more. And how many did we need again? 19, so six. Nice. Okay. I'm going to hold off for now because we're obviously going to want to be able to construct our star base. Construction finalized. Okay, good news. Again, just more worlds to claim. Um, and finally, just kind of getting a little more cohesion in the, the Empire. I'm a little curious what our piracy looks like. Um, mostly under control, it looks like. We've got the pockets that we sort of already knew about. Um... And ideally those... I can actually build another base, it looks like. Oh, Lando, rather surprisingly, is a, uh, a wretched hive of scum and villainy. Um, hopefully having Alvis nearby will help. Construction finalized. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we're actually gonna have an unemployment problems on the planet soon. So what are we looking at here? Oh no, hang on, <laughs> wrong world. Uh, I was thinking of I was thinking of the the problem world. Oh, the problem world's also a problem too. Um, Right, okay, so part of that's because of criminality. Um, why do I have the feeling that if I open up entertainer jobs, I'm going to regret it? <sighs> I'm sticking with this for now. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I can do to um, hurt the hurt the jerks who are committing crimes on my world. Probably not. Um, so we're gonna sit here in the Howling Vortex until the Grand Herald shows up. Then we're gonna move all my fleets in, and then we're gonna hope that they don't die. And then happiness will reign in the galaxy. Okay, so we're gonna slow things down to normal. We will move both to the terminal egress. This will probably be an instantaneous fight. So that is a full strength Tempest Shoal. If they run, I'm actually going to be pretty happy with that. Unless they bring back friends, then I'm going to be very, very sad about that. Um, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to move everybody into Terminal Egress. Um... Yeah, we will keep him passive because otherwise nothing's going to happen, so... Okay, so we we are gonna have to eliminate the hostile fleet, so we'll at least get we'll get him in the area. Hopefully these guys are moving away. Obviously I don't want to move him anywhere that might even be remotely provocative. Construction finalized. Okay, well, I'm always happy to sell more, um... Oh, I actually didn't mean to sell 10,000, but that worked out, so... Okay, so once they leave, we build. Just hold your horses. <laughs> In fact, yeah. <laughs> System resources analyzed. I don't want to risk any of this. Okay, newly founded colony. Again, we can't ignore um, we can't ignore our existing development. So we are actually getting a little short on food. So we're gonna turn this into a farming world. Um, These guys need three more jobs. Um, so we've got our unity producing buildings. Um, I think I did say that I was getting a little light on research, so we're gonna prioritize that first. That's gonna build two more jobs and they'll get another two when I add the generator. And I think the rest of it's gonna, I think we'll let the rest sort itself out. I am mildly tempted in this current state to um, terraform another world, um, but I think we are going to hold off until I establish myself properly in these systems. Planetary worksite established. Okay, same story here. We'll start with 
district. Now there's really not a lot for me to get here. It doesn't make any sense for me to go mining. So in this case, we'll knock out a couple of generator districts. But, oop, old Alvania still doesn't have work. So I've got unemployed robots as well as workers. So this of course gives me a reason to ditch the robot assembly plant at this point, but we do also have free buildings. So let's say, we'll put a little into our agriculture. It's actually slightly tempting to knock out my mining districts and reconfigure for, for agriculture, but I'm not gonna do that yet. And of course, as time goes by, I can use the um, I can use the world in beginning. Uh, they've got five, so they're fine. But let's maybe think about what our next step is here. Yeah, we've actually got a little a little bit of everything. Um, so now I now I have the hard decisions to make. Um, let's start with. Robot assembly plant, so I can I can make the work shortage even faster. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. Um, again, I think we're going to go for the inexpensive. Oh man, um, battleship build speed is definitely a nice one for my current circumstances. But I think we will do the advanced strike craft first. Okay, looks like we're back over our naval capacity. I have a couple of ideas about how to deal with that, but again, priorities at the moment are um, establishing my establishing my presence here. complete. Um, okay, so we knew that this might happen. Oh no, you don't. Yeah. So best case scenario is we don't lose any ships. Our research has progressed. Okay, good. We very clearly took some damage there. Okay, gamma laser. These electromagnetic radiation emitted by gamma lasers is of an extremely high frequency. Their destructive potential is unmatched in the field of laser weapons. Um... I believe the Sapient Combat, or was it Combat Simulations? Let's just double check that, because I know the tech that I wanted, Personality Matrix. Uh, I am, however, going to take a quick look at the wiki. Don't pirates sometimes come attack your systems if you ignore them? Yes, um, but I, it's, again, as always, a question of what costs I'm willing to take or what risks I'm willing to come up with. I have sort of enough, I have enough of a presence that if pirates do emerge, um, they're limited in terms of how far they can cause their damage. Whereas if I go over the starbase capacity, that means I don't get to build starbases in places that I want them. And, um, sorry, just one second, Thetic personality matrix. Um, and basically, I'm sort of paying in terms of maintenance uh, for the possibility that pirates emerge, uh, which is a guaranteed loss as opposed to um, what I've currently got, which is the potential loss of pirates, which really is just me diverting some of my resources away to dealing with them. So in this case, it's a, it's a risk I'm willing to take, effectively. Okay, so synthetics is a requirement, but not synthetic personality matrix. Um, so I think I'm gonna, well, I mean, all this stuff. Okay, no, actually, Tachyon Lance is a pretty good, that's a pretty good one, so. So obviously the hope here is that we don't have any more, uh, bad guys show up to, to cause me grief. <laughs> nice of you to join us. Uh, looks like we still have more... Po oh, you know what? I probably didn't deal with any of that. Okay. Um, so for this case, we will say... 
they will go to the trouble planet. And it does look like um, my robotic servants can do specialized work. But I think what I want to do here is I'm going to send them to my colonies. So Kabji is a... Well, actually, both Kabji and uh, Ninjil. Again, part of this is just to get my population up. So if we want to take a look at the progress that we've made, um, 989, so we are sort of starting to catch up with the Econo Nation. We're, we're still behind by about 100, but we're, we're getting there. And to Gaj, we've clearly eclipsed. That's been true for a while. Um, the Estani are our vassals, so that, it's good that we outnumber them, uh, suffice to say. Uh, Commune of Islok. We've overcome. I am very surprised that their fleet power still counts as overwhelming. I am not 100% sure what the deal is with that. It could be that they are currently the president of the Favorable Pact. The Engaj League have always been pathetic. Um, doesn't count if it's a fallen empire. Sorry, I should be looking at... Po I don't think I can look at population numbers. Um, some of these are just not that interesting. Uh, and then my hated enemies, the Zithorians, who have got a fairly decent number. Uh, fortunately, equal fleet power. Okay, what's my shipyard looking like? Uh, we are going to need to start building some destroyers here, so what are we looking at? Um... 16 to 24. God damn it. It's about 19 destroyer. Right, we finished our destroyers. So we are on to... Thirty-eight Corvette. Okay, so we need um, 27 of these things. They build fast too, so... Okay, seven of them for now. And again, for the reason we want to plow as much money as we can into the construction of the starbase. I wonder if there is a strategy uh, in, like, in terms of like just popping in and out right when this gets to 99% to stop somebody from moving in. Okay. Uh, as always, we set ourselves up. Um, clearly, we are going to have a food shortage soon, so I want to be careful about that. Let's actually take a look at where our bread baskets are. So, Paradaya is a great candidate for... I can afford one, but... That should probably take take us through most most of our circumstances. This will be a good one for uh, Generator Planet, though. Construction complete. System resources analyzed. Mostly what that... So obviously that seems like a bit of a freak out move, but the idea here is just to queue up a bunch of uh, food production so that when we, you know, when our population grows, clearly the tech side of the population is not going to be a problem. Um, but if, uh, you know, it's just kind of to, to make sure that as some of my colonized worlds naturally grow, uh, I'm going to sort of be able to build enough of a... Um, yeah, I... This is probably going to wind up going to some ridiculous number again, now that I think of it. Construction but. complete. Okay. Priority number one, get this thing. We'll defend this thing. I think because I'm going to attempt to... I'm going to attempt to have a, a 
kind of a firmer grip on this um, this system, I am actually going to keep the. I am going to keep the uh, construction ship building some infrastructure. It's not guaranteed that we're going to be able to hold it, but now that I've been able to establish Planetary my base again, established. I'm in good news. Now, one thing that isn't a hundred percent clear to me is why my sensors don't allow me to see what's in these other systems. Uh, because clearly, being able to use one of my science ships to get an idea in terms of whether or not there's anything dangerous on the other side is a is a big deal. For instance. Knowing that there were like four or five of the Tempest Shoals uh, ready to eat me, um, that would have been a pretty big piece of information for me to, to pick up on. There is something of a temptation to try and colonize these areas too if there's no enemies inside of them, but uh, at that point then I'm defending multiple uh, points of entry, so it's better that we just find the way to shut down the Nanites once and for all and, uh, and take it from there. Okay, Colony, um, we'll start you off with a unity building as we are wont to do. Alright, and looks like I do need to start restoring some jobs. Oh, damn it. I'm just gonna wait for unemployment. There's there's no way of making this thing happy. All right. This is the problem with me building so many colony worlds. Uh, I don't really need the extra minerals, but this is a really good world for it. Um, okay, we'll knock out the energy for now. At some point, I'm also gonna need to audit all of these worlds and make sure that their specializations are where they need to be. But that's a it's kind of a second order consi consideration. Got 175 days. Finalized. I actually think because I'm getting close to an hour past my normal time, I'm gonna fast forward on this one just to help with the upgrades. Construction finalized. Okay, same story here. We'll build the districts. We'll build energy because energy is one of my highest priorities right now we're doing very good for energy so i'm going to start converting some worlds that um okay this is already being terraformed remember there was a desert world somewhere i think maybe i already took care of that one though um, yeah, so I mean the Tundra World, ah, you know what, we can afford a Tundra World. Yeah, so there's a few at our borders, um, but we're, we're actually getting in a fairly decent point. I, this is at a point really where I should start be, uh, start considering, uh, building a new capital. Do I not have a colony on here already? Um, let me just make sure I don't have colony ships already on their way out. Because obviously the more I can get this stuff working, the happier I am. Helps me get that population number up, and helps me produce more weapons. Um, okay. I've got an idle construction ship. It's probably been idle for a while. Uh, so let's think about where the next bit of expansion happens. I think I said I was unhappy with the fact... Okay, well, that's already working there. Um... Okay, so this guy's going to take care of the western part of the empire. Construction complete. Again, I want to be a little careful on the um I want to be a little careful on how much I'm expanding because if I need to wind up replacing this star base at some point, um it is fairly important that I be able to uh it's fairly important that I be able to 
like build it fast and influence is not the sort of thing that you can just spend money on and, and get again. So I do want to be a little conscious of that potential wrinkle. Uh, but for now, I'll, I'll live with what we've got here. Resources Again, analyzed. with this science ship here, this complete. exists. I'll put them in the terminal egress. Complete. But the point here is that they are eventually going to start poking around some of these other systems just to get an idea of what's out there. Um, ideally, they will be set up to run at the first sign of danger, although in reality it's usually been that there's just some terrible um, group of, you know, of monsters waiting for them. Um, another thing I need to eventually consider is some upgrades for this. Hang on, the Grand Herald is short. They should be at 140. What's the deal here? Eight cruisers, 19 destroyers, 34 corvettes. Oh, I lost corvettes somewhere. Um, okay, well, those are ones I can actually build in in this star base, so I, I won't worry too much about that. They won't be as experienced, but they're also screening ships, so I think I can live with it. Nice thing is I'll probably also be able to get some upgrades in. Oh, once again, Elor Prime has been pummeled by falling asteroids, and this time part of our colony has been destroyed. Needless to say, the local population is not happy, so we have other priorities or something must be done. Situation log updated. Okay, I'll research the the ultimate weapon. Construction complete. Okay, good news here. So, um, counter to what I did before, I'm actually going to put a shipyard here because this will allow me to do upgrades. Uh, crew quarters for to help with the costs, then we'll add a missile battery. Um, before we upgrade to a star hold, I'm actually going to add... I'm going to add all the defense platforms. I'm just going to lock that in. Then we'll do the upgrade. And of course, this gives me the advantage of... Um, being able to repair my ships while, while we're waiting. Together we will build a brighter future. Okay, uh, bonus food from jobs. Obviously, we're going to be very well, <laughs> uh, very well set up for food for expansion. Um, the process of synthetically replicating crops requires a lot of collected waste to create a small amount of produce, but nevertheless, it provides a significant boost to agricultural output. So, social research. We're really running out of good ideas here. Paradise Dome is probably, uh, again, just one of these little light bits of tech that I can, um, I can easily afford. Okay, always happy to see people getting repaired. Again, the main point of the shipyard here is so that I'm going to be able to build uh, replacement corvettes. You'll notice I am utterly terrified complete. of the possibility of the uh, Special Inquiry coming back. Concluded. A combination of extra sturdy construction techniques and automated defenses should keep the colony on Elor Prime safe from further asteroid impacts. So let's just see what terrible things have happened to my empire while I've been neglecting it. Uh, well, unemployment, but other than that, we're doing okay. So there really shouldn't be unemployment here because we can upgrade all of these buildings. Um, this is Rurius, my agro world. Uh, I do actually, well, no, now I don't need the extra farmer output. Um, so my first priority has got to be research. Second prior, or no, first priority has got to be the capital, then alloys. Um, we'll build one more of these. Let's take all the natural resources I can get and we'll use the remaining districts. Something like that, anyway. So some of these worlds, I'm actually going to need to make some decisions soon. Nope, like I said, I'm waiting for unemployment. These guys... These guys don't take the right job. OK, 
Okay, once the shipyard's done, I'm going to knock out as many uh, corvettes as I can. I'm also going to take the opportunity to upgrade some of these guys. One of the drawbacks about this approach is that if the Grand Herald complete. is split out at uh, an inconvenient time, I might pay for that. Um, but I think that's a risk I'm willing to take in order to keep the fleets fresh. Um... And I still want to keep this ship close by, but for now, I'm sort of willing to send them out to colonize a few of these other worlds. I guess, again, the nice thing about having a, a ship in the area is, uh, or shipyard, is that I can always build... Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, a shipyard, I can always build a replacement construction ship if it comes down to it. Okay, so apparently I'm moving it somewhere useless. So let's send it somewhere useful again. Okay, the native life on Zudra Prime uh, is built on an epic scale far larger than anyone previously thought was possible for biological life. The question now in the minds of our researchers is, what is their secret and can we benefit from it? Proposals to study the native life in greater detail are flooding in. So we can proceed with the study. No, leave the giants alone or study them, harvest them, and see if there's anything useful. So, no, here we will proceed with the Situation study. Situation log updated. All right, do I need a... I do not need a research ship, so we will spend the two months researching. I am going to need to consider building those corvettes soon, but let's get the corvettes in this system built first. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hooray! Okay. Again, I, I question the need for the fleet manager when it behaves like this, but... Okay, so... Again, as dumb as it is, um, I'm going to move the existing fleets out of the range of the the base, and this is just to make sure that... It's basically just to make sure that the Grand Herald gets the, the ships, so... Uh, one, two, three, four. And actually, I think we will start the upgrade right away. Gives me something to work with. Construction complete. Special inquiry concluded. Titanic life study success. After a period of research and study, the scientists on Zudra Prime have managed to make a breakthrough and achieve limited communication with some of the Titans. While huge, slow, and difficult to talk to, the Titans are incredibly tough and strong. Some few have expressed a desire to join our military forces, where they will undoubtedly be an incredible asset. Well, that's going to be a second Titan world that we have, so I'm very happy to bring them in. Um... Oh, it looks like there's an overall cap. That's a shame. If I have two Titanic worlds, I should be should be able to, <laughs> to get more than one. All right. Um, Construction complete. Again, I'm just waiting on the Corvettes, then I'll be happy to move these guys back in. Obviously, I'm paying quite a bit by keeping these fleets out of the way, too, but that's a cost I'm willing to take just to make sure. I mean, honestly, it's a convenience um, price that I'm paying. Complete. Okay, idle construction ships are never good, so we'll get them to build mining stations and move on to the next location. Wait, now I've made them move past... Oh my god, no, I am... Now I remember, this was always intended to have 120. Um, Construction complete. Actually, this is kind of funny. No, 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 this will still... Okay, actually, no, this is, this is all fine. Um...
System resources analyzed. This is to save money. Together we will build a brighter future. Okay, so Axe, the Grand Herald, no science ship. We do not need the Titan. These are the guys who get upgraded. Okay, advanced strike craft, a further refinement of the strike craft design. Um, these advanced strike craft are a pilot's dream. Their performance far exceeds that of previous models. Um, this is different from... I'm talking about titanic life forms, not titans. Um, okay. Uh... I'll do the nanite transmitter because it's cheap, but I feel bad about it. <laughs> System resources analyzed. Construction complete. Construction complete. Okay, missile batteries coming along. I'm a little curious how long it takes the defense platforms to build. Um, I think it's possible that there might even be more benefits. Ooh, esteemed High Queen Merg the First, a decade ago the Akano High Kingdom pledged to support the artisan troop, and so you have. The time of your patronage is coming to an end, but we would be remiss not to ask. Would you care to renew your subscription to the finest arts and crafts in the galaxy? It's a deal. Um, I may not actually finish my hardening of the terminal egress. But at least I at least want to get an idea in terms of how long it's going to take me. Also, uh, do I have any fires on my existing worlds? I have some free... Oh, Rurius is unemployed now. Okay, it's a slave pop that's unemployed. It's been a while since I've had one of those happen. Um, they will go to Paradia. Honestly, there are worse <laughs> fates than being a slave in paradise. Oh god, that's another thing I need to do on all my colonized worlds. Um, make sure that uh, the... Discourse seeding in progress. Make sure that my my species is the one that gets the priority for birth. Has progressed. Okay, Paradise Dome. With the latest advances in architecture, landscaping, and holographic technology, we shall build the homes of the future. So, again, my priority here is cheap. So naval capacity it is. Actually, naval capacity will also help me uh, in terms of my budget. I have a feeling this upgrade is going to be painfully slow. Establishing means of production. It's possible that some of the carriers um, got Ships some upgrades upgraded. with that new. Oop. Okay, looks like the carriers are fine. So, against my better judgment, uh, let's take a look at Old Alvania. It's probably. Yup. Albus has left the building. No, Albus has been sitting idle um, because I can't do multiple things at once. So we need 20 Corvettes. Can I afford it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7. A little more expensive than I want it to be, but that's going to be another full fleet that I have available. And I actually think I am going to send it to the Terminal Egress. Hello. Oh. Oh, this is going to suck. The Great Khan almost certainly has woken up. Uh. 
Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm just getting intelligence on this. I mean, these ships aren't all that scary compared to what I've got right now. I'm a little bit more worried about the Nanites, but... Maybe it'd be better if we just didn't fight at all. System resources analyzed. We're doing pretty well in terms of generating these energy credits. Um, so this plan on aggressively pursuing... Um... Oh, man. This is a really expensive activation, but... Uh, excerpt, Symbols of Worship, 102nd edition. Zarklan, renowned holy figure of indeterminate species, worshipped as a divine prophet by at least seven different galactic religions during the fourth inter uh, interregnum, 32nd cycle of Kabva. Ultimate fate unknown, but references in historical records cease after the 38th cycle, historically heavily de uh, debated since at least early 41st cycle, dismissed by many today as fable or legend. So here we will reverse engineer arcane tech. Um, yeah, I'm not quite ready to, not quite ready to knock this thing out, but I am very curious how powerful these fallen, um, how powerful these fallen empire fleets are. Also, I want to know how the hell I get rid of the crime on the planet. Um, anyways, the aim was to see how long it'll take me to uh, to build defensive platforms. Ah, about 70 days. That's not... Oh, <laughs> it lists it right here too. 96. All right. Establishing um, means of production. Yeah, I mean, we are, we are basically at the one hour mark over now. Um, I don't know. So I think here, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep this running on fast uh, while my defensive structures are being built. But here's what I think is going to happen in terms of the playthrough. I am... Ah, I knew it! For the first time in recorded history, the warring factions of the Iztran have united under a single great Khan, this mysterious warlord who, from their warrior, uh, according to some accounts, is a powerful psychic, has emerged from their warrior caste and accomplished what most thought impossible. Through a combination of guile, charisma, and military genius, the new cr newly crowned great Khan has won the utter loyalty and devotion of all Iztran factions. Now they are no longer busy killing each other, the Iztran are turning their attention elsewhere. Great fleets are massing for war, crewed by eager warriors who are now steadfast comrades in arms, despite having been mortal enemies mere months ago. A new threat is born. I am Trak, Great Khan of the Iztran Horde. I am here to announce to the galaxy that a new age is upon us. The dark era where Iztran would senselessly butcher one another for scraps of resources or a misguided sense of honor has finally come to an end. I have solemnly promised my people a new beginning through the formation of a great empire that will forever enshrine the name of Iztran species in the annals of galactic history. To those who stand in our way, know this. I will stop at nothing to realize the true destiny of my people. If you oppose us, the Iztran Horde will grind you to dust. Now, this could not have happened in a worse location for me. Oh no, this could not have happened in a better location for me. I thought it was the Yildar Freeholders. The Iztran are right in the middle of my enemies. And they are going to cause a world of hurt. <laughs> so... Um, this is going to be where I end it because this is just going to be a whole other set of uh, exciting stories. The thing I want to be careful about now is to find where all the wormholes are. Um, because if the Great Khan shows up... Like, what I, what I want to be worrying about is so there's the possibly possibility of ofang in fact i think ofang is due i think in this case we are going to start doing some upgrades there 
Um, so possible threat vectors. Uh, obviously, natural expansion to the west after conquering some of these guys. Although this is a fallen empire. Although I have seen... By the way, I have seen these guys take out fallen empires before, so... <laughs> Don't break the fourth wall, you clever child, you. Um... So just because there's a fallen empire there does not mean that the Istran aren't going to clobber them. Ah, yes, Bunda. Bunda is going to be... That's going to be where the source of the problems comes from. So if they manage to get here, that's going to give them access to Birzun, which means Tybor is also going to need an upgrade. Um, okay. So Ofang is already taken care of. I'm going to say the Zithor... I actually really want them to go and hurt the Zithorians for a while. Um, fortunately... I mean, if they get powerful enough that they're able to wipe out the Zithorians, I need to be worried about where I sit in terms of my ability to take them on. Um... But yeah, essentially what I want to be looking for here is where they might potentially be coming after me. And... Aha! Kabji is also a weak spot. I don't really have the alloy. The... The priority is definitely going to be to hardening the eter the terminal egress first. Um, um, but yeah, so here is the game plan for next week. Um, although I am wondering if you guys would maybe prefer to see um, Age of Wonders Planetfall, because I definitely noticed the dwarf playthroughs kind of had a little bit of a decline in terms of average viewers. Um, but I don't know, it's a bad one to say at the end of the stream, because obviously anybody who's hanging out to the end of the stream um, wants to see more Stellaris. So, um, game plan for the near future. Uh, number one, I need to make sure that terminal egress is at maximum defense. So this is going to mean building six defense platforms and upgrading Belladante. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, I don't think I saw you inside a chat. That's complete. I was going to say, I know not everybody likes to participate inside a chat, but let me take a minute to say thank you for that follow. Um, moving on. Um... Again, because, like, I need to... So the trick that I have here is I need to find the off switch for these guys. You've been lurking while you play Stellaris. Awesome. Hopefully you've been having a slightly more action-packed or less disastrous uh, playthrough that, I, uh, <laughs> that I've been having. Obviously, I, I'm in a very precarious position. I've got a federation that can crush me on a whim. We've got the Great Khan. We haven't turned off the, um, the replicators. But there's also a lot of potential here because I've secured a lot more of the territory than I had at the beginning. Um, and if I can get one of my spare fleets kicking around to, you know, to deal with some of these little little pockets. Um, well, the automated dreadnoughts more than just a little pocket. But um, this also has the potential of turning into something like a really good base from which I'm going to be able to to flex my muscle, especially because um, if you take a look, like compared to the types of uh, shipyards that I can build, like, yes, we're over the naval capacity right now. I am almost certain that we can double this number and then bring the navies to um, uh, bring the navies to sort of match that. So <laughs> to make my own federate, who would join it, though? I've got like one subject, which is still had like the real problem here is that um, all the others have, um, like, all the other uh, empires have, like, eaten up all the terror. Like, I really wanted to subjugate these guys because they had, like, an L gate and a gateway and all of that. And as it turns out, all of the bad guys have just kind of come in and taken all this territory from them. So my my subject definitely got the wrong end of the, the L gate event. Um... 
I mean, the Kenti would be okay joining me, but I'm not entirely sure I... I mean, like, the Kenti had the same thing here. Like, there's another Elgate situation where the, the Sondrathian kind of came in. I'm almost certain that the next batch of wars are going to be over these Elgate destinations. But again, I, I hold the terminal egress, and one of the things is that this defensive position is as much about building myself a strong point against the replicators as it is against uh, anybody who will want to take this cluster. Um... But yeah, so the, the overall plan, though, um, first priority in terms of expenses is to get the terminal egress in its maximum hardness. Uh, we'll sort of see where the wind is blowing with the Istran Void Raiders. I'm actually okay le uh, letting them sort of feast on my enemies for the next little while. It would be ideal if they go to the Zithorian uh, Confederation, but the likelihood is, is that if they can make it to the Zithorians, they also have a way of striking at me, which is why I'm going to be putting some investments in Ofang, and uh, Kabji, uh, just because those are the most direct paths. Uh, I might also, third priority is Tiber, but um, I'm trying to prioritize in, in terms of the most likely places that they'll, they'll come. And of course, uh, we're more likely to, um, we're more likely to get some indications in terms of where, where the wind's blowing once they start taking over some people. Um, but yes. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry I didn't do the re- Actually, you know what? For those of you who haven't watched this playthrough before, uh, if you want to know what my species is, this is the Akano, uh, the story of Harrison Jones, High King of Old Alvania. No artifact was safe from Jones, and even the most ingenious engineers of ages past could not develop a mechanism that would confound him. Through his legendary exploits, Jones united the quarrelsome tribes and set his sights on new secrets and the treasures buried within. The Akano people of Old Alvania are now reaching out to the galaxy in their stone ships, continuing the great work of the High King. No tomb is safe and no civilization will remain untouched. And of course, we have taken the, uh, the flesh is weak um, and we will be pursuing the synthetic evolution. And so we will become the dwarves that have, uh, have fully mechanized themselves. Um, and it's been a fun one. I've obviously not been like properly role playing because this entire playthrough has been trying to uh, trying to stay ahead of vastly powerful neighbors. But it's been a really fun one. I feel like I've been learning a lot out of this. So um, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you especially um, Johnny Big Time and Eyes of Sin because you are two streamers who I am very fond of as well as um, friends who uh, make me happy to see. And of course that's not to single out. Uh, any particular individuals in the sense of like I you know I don't mean to make it sound like I I don't appreciate um the regulars who do come in obviously seeing you know Maka, MRA, Sungif, Falcon I don't know if you're still around Falcon, Ascanius um you know I'm used to sort of seeing at the very beginning and Tall Man Alive I think that covers everyone I'm really sorry if I if I missed actually Half Truth I think was another name uh Half Truth is the same color as uh, Maka anyways um I'm pretty sure I covered everybody, but thank you very much for watching. Um, I, I, it is very hard for me not to, not to single out uh, Sin and Johnny, though, because they are two people who I really enjoy watching, as well as uh, people who I enjoy, um, enjoy having in the channel. Um, I think I'm going to host um, Ponce tonight. Ponce is doing Classic WoW, so uh, everybody was mentioning... Um, Everyone's asking, is like, you're not doing Classic WoW tonight? No, <laughs> I probably won't be doing uh, Classic WoW for a while um, because I have regular WoW to play. But um, uh, Ponce is a really, really great guy. He used to do a lot of EverQuest streams. Um, so I think it's uh, it's a good chance for us to catch up with um, with uh, with the game. I, I, I think he's the only person who plays Warcraft that I would be happy to uh to host so i hope you all treat him well um just a heads up in terms of what's happening this week tomorrow uh will be another episode of the elder scrolls it will be very focused on one mission because it's a very long and a very difficult one uh but we're making some good progress inside of the game uh we might even be getting near the end it kind of feels like we're building towards a climax so um, if you like watching those, um, there's going to be a little bit more story progress by the end of the stream. That doesn't mean that the journey towards it is going to be a fast one. Uh, Wednesday, we're back to Cult of Simulator, which also seems to be closing in a little bit. Uh, we're probably more mid-game on that one, but I have a feeling that one will wrap up a little bit sooner than I think any of us realize. 
Um, and then I am going to do my absolute best to record another Surviving Mars episode because I've been pretty good at doing one every two weeks, but I am really behind the eight ball as far as getting some of my stuff recorded and just generally some of my side projects and all of that. So no promises. Uh, I will do my best for that. And then Friday, it's either going to be Darkest Dungeon or Age of Wonders Planetfall because it sounds like people really want to watch that. But I'm wearing out my my closing. Please uh, stick around for Ponce. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and we will see you tomorrow, Wednesday or Friday or maybe a week from now, depending on what you like watching. See you then.